Well, greetings and salutations, everybody. Welcome to the best damn movie related show on the planet Earth, the John Campy Show. Coming to you from right here on my YouTube channel. I am, of course, your host, John Campia, and it is an awesome honor and privilege, as it is every day, to have you, our international friends, gather around as we talk about our favorite things in the world movies, movie news, TV, streaming, all sorts of good stuff. And joining us here today, fresh out of the Petri dish, Robert Meyer Burnett is back, ladies and gentlemen. Robert, how are you feeling today, sir? John, I'm I'm feeling good. You know, I've I've, I've taken all precautions. Uh, I have to say, though, I've missed you. I've Aww. missed all of you. I've missed you. Aww. I've missed Joey Bishop. Uh, it ain't, but it ain't no joke, man. It was not. It was not fun. It was boring and not fun. <laughs> well, it's, but, like, um, it's good to have you back. I, I mean, uh, where did you get that fantastic Iron Man pop? I've been seeing Ray it as I watched it for me. I mean, let, let, sorry, sorry. Let me rephrase. Ray using my money mm -hmm. purchased it for me. <laughs> wow. But Ray, you're so generous. Those yeah. things are not cheap. Yeah. Then you got you that use the money to buy me something. Money. <laughs> By the way, also sitting right beside Robert, she's filling in for Chris Carr today. Chris Carr is off at Star Wars Celebration for the next two days. I will be there Saturday. But filling in for Chris, Aaron Cummings is here with Joey Bishop. Aaron, Hello. how you doing? Hello. And yes, Ray was commenting about how Joey was was in the nude yesterday. So we decided to mm -hmm. put on her little springtime dress. And so we're very happy to be here. She looks delightful. Of course, <laughs> back there, uh, joining you guys in the live chat today, Ray Orr is here. Ray, how you doing? Hey. Oh, but look at that thing it. leaning against the TV in the background there. You, you got you got yourself a big moon. Yeah, I got a moon coming. <laughs> moon moon coming, coming in. And uh, of course, producer Jonathan is here with. Does he have a working? Hello. That's a working wow. one. You get a good shot of Ray's moon back there too. Anyway, guys, <laughs> great to have you here. Here's how today's show is going to go. We're going to break it up into two parts. In the first half of the show, we're going to talk about some predetermined topics. Then in the second half of the show, we're going to take your live comments and questions. So if you're watching live, and only if you're watching live, once we get to the end of our final main topic, we're going to announce that we're opening up the Super Chats, and you guys will have a couple of minutes to fire any thoughts, opinions, questions, theories that you have, and we will read those off in the second half of the show. Also, a little bit of housekeeping here. If you need your daily fix of the John Campia Show, but you can't always be in front of a YouTube video, maybe you're at work or you're commuting, whatever, good news, there is an audio-only version of our show simply called the John Campia Show Podcast. Just go on your favorite podcasting app of choice, search for the John Campia Show Podcast, and subscribe to it today. And speaking of which, there's also a separate podcast feed for our Mailbag Show. So just go on there and search for Mailbag, a John Campia Show bonus feed podcast. Just go and search for that, and you can have both podcast feeds there when you need it. Also, guys, I don't know if you knew this, but today... It's game day. Game Today day. is game day. Obi-Wan is out tonight. The first two episodes. I'm so stoked about it. Cannot wait. And so, of course, since we're going to be watching Obi-Wan tonight, that means tomorrow we are going to be doing our Obi-Wan after show that is going to be tomorrow at 4 p.m. Uh, do we got a graphic for it? There it is. The Obi-Wan Kenobi after show tomorrow at 4 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. We're going to be running down and talking all about the episodes that are going to drop tonight and all their open spoilery goodness. So make sure you guys come along and join us for that uh, tomorrow. Okay. Uh, one last little thing I'm going to mention. Um, so for those of you who are members of the channel, and, of course, we have channel memberships now. Thank you to all of you who have become channel members. Uh, do me a favor. One of the uh, emojis, exclusive emojis that you guys have access to is that little aviation gin bottle with, uh, with using the code SHOT, S-H-O-T. <laughs> do me shot, a favor. Shot, I want to try a little thing here. Whenever something happens during the show that you think might be worthy of being called the shot of the day, <laughs> whether it's a really funny moment or a really it's some, somebody says something really cool and insightful, do me a favor, just like Aiden is doing right now in the in the live chat there, and Amin, do me a favor, when that happens, Fire in the shot emoji so we can get a gauge of what you guys thought was like the moment of the day. Or as we're going to call around here, the shot of the day. Or if I hit you with like uh, some fortune cookie wisdom. Well, that might, if it's, mm. if it's really deep, <laughs> if it's really deep, it could be the shot of the day. All right, guys. Listen, with all that down, uh, let's get things to it. And we are unfortunately going to start off on a sad note uh, with an off the top. And that is this. Uh, driving in this morning, literally about two minutes away from the office, I got a, a ping on my phone. Uh, I looked down at my watch, and uh, news had come in that Ray Liotta, iconic, legendary actor Ray Liotta, had passed away 
at the age of 67. Now, from the initial reports that I'm reading, he uh, passed away in his sleep uh, while working, doing what he loved doing. He was on set of uh, mm. a movie. They, it was overnight. He, he fell asleep, and I, I guess he just didn't wake up. Uh, this comes to us from the folks over at IndieWire who wrote the following. A good fellow star Ray Liotta has died at the age of 67. A representative for Liotta confirms for, to IndieWire that the actor passed away in his sleep while filming Dangerous Waters in the Dominican Republic. Liotta survived by his daughter, uh, Kerson Liotta. Uh, the star was engaged to be married to J.C. Nitolo. Leota is best known for portraying the rise and fall of mob man Harry, Henry Hill in Martin Scorsese's 1990 classic, uh, Goodfellas, obviously, but also made a name for himself thanks to his charming and often menacing contributions to crime cinema beyond Goodfellas. He had starring roles in cult classics like Blow and the Science of the Lamb sequel Hannibal, as well as Killing Them Softly and Identity. I loved him in Identity. Always elevating a genre assignment to grittier and often profound places. The Newark, New Jersey native with the steely blue eyes was coming off a string of hits, including Marriage Story, which he was amazing in, yeah. Sopranos prequel film, The Many Saints of Newark. I didn't love that movie, but I loved him in it. And No Sudden Move, Leota uh, completed production on Cocaine Bear, oh. helmed by Elizabeth Banks, and was set to star in the working title film, The Substance, opposite Demi Moore and Margaret Qualley. Leota will also appear in Taron Egerton's, in the upcoming Apple TV series, Blackbird. So Ray Leota, who had been having... I think a, a real resurgence lately. Again, what I loved him in Many States of New York. To me, he was the biggest bright spot yeah, yeah. of that series. Obviously, Marriage Story, which which got everybody talking and stuff like that. Terrific in that. Iconic in an era, still working and doing great work today. Way too young. Um, I mean, it sounds weird because it's clearly not his best movie. But I don't know why, but when I think of Ray Liotta, the first thing my mind goes to is that scene in Hannibal where she shows up and he's sitting there with his skull off <laughs> and Hannibal is like carving out little pieces of brain, but he's still talking. The performance of that scene from Ray Liotta is what just makes it creepy as hell. So I was super sad to hear about this news. He still had so many good years to give us. Uh, Ray Liotta passed away at the age of 67. Rob, you heard about this. What comes to your mind when you think of Ray Liotta? Well, you know, it's I, I, I think of him as a character actor. Mm. You know, even though, even though, he, as Henry Hill in Goodfellas, one of the great performances of all time. I mean that that movie. Every time you go watch it, it patches passes the HBO test. You have to watch it if it comes on. But I just I loved his presence because no one looked like him. Yep. You yeah. know when he, he and with no his, one really sounded like no him with his steely mm. icy blue eyes and, and he just had a look that was unique to him. And I I love the sound of his voice and I. I will miss him. You know, he whenever he always classed up the joint. Like yeah, he, was he really in did. Blow. I think he played Johnny Depp's dad in Blow. <laughs> and I, I just, it's so sad. I mean, look, if you have to go, you're in the Dominican Republic. You go <laughs> while making movies. While making mm -hmm. movies. You know, I, I would hate to be the producer of that film today. Oh, I yeah. mean, calling the insurance company. But yeah. um, still, I mean, he had a great life and he gave us a lot of great performances. And But I, he will be missed, dude. Yeah, and I I miss I I miss him already because I, I just enjoy like you said Hannibal as Krendler he was such a <laughs> dick in that movie and that scene I mean he treated he, he, he it, she's so mean to Julianne Moore you know he's so and that scene like you said that was one of the first things that I thought about just like you did about how creepy that and he's eating his own brain, brain that is, <laughs> it's just you know what so I, I too the other thing is we we're just talking about many saints in Newark. I don't know in all these iconic roles he's done. I don't know that he ever came across as like imposing and intimidating as he did when he was in those jail scenes, like sitting yeah. across the table, like the just the power he exuded and stuff. Like he he could do an awful lot on stage. He could bring a lot of things to the screen. Anyway, Aaron, you hear about the passing of Ray Liotta. What stands out to you when you think about him and his career? Well, I actually did a movie with Ray Liotta. Um, a movie, it was called The Iceman with Michael That's Shannon. Right. And Nona yeah. I forgot about that. Yeah, um, I didn't have any scenes with him, but I did meet him at our New York premiere, and um, I was actually yelling at the director at the time and he was standing right there and he was just looking at me smiling and I felt there was almost a sense of like man this girl's got some chutzpah and I was like <laughs> Ray Liotta I mean he, he was very he's 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 a very um 
uh, I don't want to say intimidating, but he has a presence about him in person that uh, that that you really understand why he plays these types of menacing roles. He, as you said beautifully, those steely, icy blue eyes can just penetrate your soul and um, almost make you feel like you're being exposed in some way. And Ironically enough, uh, he's actually, I saw on IMDb that he is also in the midst of filming a project called April 29th, 1992 with the director that I was screaming at in front of him, <laughs> Ariel Brumman. Um, hi, Ariel. Love you. Uh, but so, so we, in addition to filming this project in the Dominican Republic, he also obviously had other projects that were in the works recently completed. And that's one of the things that, um, you know, also is... Uh, uh, you know, obviously, when someone passes who has contributed so much to our industry, we merely have to be thankful for those contributions. Um, for me, Goodfellas will always be the ultimate Ray Liotta film and the movie that made me fall in love with him as a performer. Um, but to see someone, as you said, having a resurgence in their career and not being able to fully complete these projects that clearly were attractive to him for some reason. Uh, we certainly will be missing out on those, but I celebrate the great contributions that he's made. And this might be a nice weekend to all gather around with the kids and watch a good old fashioned Ray Liotta family friendly film. If like you can Anna find good one. Fellas. Like, yeah, exactly. <laughs> you, you know, John, I wanted to point out that he also did the voice of, uh, on GTA Vice City, That's which right. was a great game. And also, I completely forgot he was in Field of Dreams. Yeah, he yeah. was. Yep. He was the, oh, wow. He was this, uh, Kevin Costner. Yeah, when it dad. comes out of the cornfield. Yeah, yeah. 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 Want to have a catch? <laughs> yeah, that was so great. I cry I every it. time. Anyway, guys, question is for you. What do you think about when you think of the incredible career of Ray Liotta and his passing out at the age of 67? He will certainly be missed in this business. Whatever you think about when you think of him, jump down to the comment section below and leave those thoughts there. Okay, guys, with that down, it's time to move into our main topics here today. And how do we select our main topics here on the John Campus Show? Well, it's really rather simple. You see, you guys come up with them. Whenever you come across a big topic issue or story that you guys feel we need to cover as a main topic here on the show, just go anytime, 24-7, over to www.thejohncampiashow.com slash contact. Once you guys get there, you're going to see a form. Fill it out with your topic or question. It's absolutely free. Hit submit, and then maybe... Just maybe you might see your submission featured as a main topic here on the John Campia show. With that down, Aaron, what is our first main topic today? Our first main topic comes from Great Gabthar's Hammer. With the upcoming Last of Us adaptation and the recent release of Uncharted, which I personally enjoy, though I understand why most were lukewarm to it, it looks like we have some more PlayStation titles in talks for adaptation. A recent investor briefing at Sony has mentioned a Horizon Zero Dawn Netflix series, a God of War Amazon series, and a Gran Turismo project, which has yet to be attached to any streaming service. Throw in the Ghost of Tsushima movie and a Twisted Metal project, and it seems Sony, and more specifically PlayStation Studios, are going all in with their video game adaptations. All right. Thanks a lot for saying that. And obviously, we had the wrong email graphic there. Sorry about that, right. guys. Um, anyway, so yeah, look, it was really interesting that a little while ago, well, let, actually, let's rewind a little bit more. Sony came out a while ago and announced that they were setting up PlayStation Studios because mm -hmm. they realized, look, we've got all this exclusive high profile IP that people love. It's time for us not just to try to make one or two. Let's actually create a dedicated arm that's completely focused on taking these IP and translating them to the big screen. We already had Uncharted come out to mixed reception, but it did pretty well financially yeah. for them. 396 million. And, and there are some people like Ray who absolutely love the film. I mean, so there it is. I mean, it was a little wanting for me, but I didn't have a bad time at it, whatever. But they're off to a bit of a start <clears> here. And they've got a lot of property coming out at the same time. Last of Us is coming. That's being made on HBO, which is incredible. Now, we heard a little while ago whispers about them doing, heard some reports that they were going to do God of War. Well, now... It is officially official, officially official, <laughs> as the Sony uh, the the Sony head came out and said, "Yep, it's done. We're going to be absolutely doing God of War, and on top of that, we're going to be doing uh, Horizon." 
So this is what they wrote. This comes to us from CBR who wrote the following. Originally released as a PlayStation 4 exclusive in 2017 before eventually launching on PC in 2020, Horizon Zero Dawn is a post-apocalyptic sci-fi game set in a far future post-apocalyptic Earth overrun by gigantic robotic animals. In, an, in order to survive, humans have cut themselves off from technology, living in fear of the beasts. The story follows Aloy, I hope I'm saying her name right, Voiced by Ashley Birch, who embarks on a journey to find her mother and discover what unleashed the robots upon the world. Now, this is really interesting, too, because, like, what was the name of that J.J. Abrams show we were talking about yesterday? Fringe? Demi Moaned? Oh, Demi Moaned. Uh, yes. Demi Moaned? Uh -huh. Demi What did they say? It was about loose French women? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> about Chris and Aaron, yeah. Well, that's PlayStation Studios, because they're playing with everybody. <laughs> Boy, I missed out. Because. <laughs> yeah. What a day for Rob to be gone. The whole time, Rob. <laughs> because they're doing Last of Us with HBO. They're doing uh, God of War with Amazon. And they're going to do Horizon Zero Dawn with Netflix. So they're spreading the goodness around. Everybody's going to get a little taste, which is great because, listen, I've always said for a long time, the reason that most video game movies, almost all of them, have sucked is because of one underlying principle that nobody wants to admit. Video game stories are not made to be narrative stories in a linear storytelling format. They're meant to accent a game. There have been, though, especially a couple in the last few years that really do lend themselves to very good linear like storytelling, whether that is a last of us, which I cannot wait to see what HBO does with that. God of war is absolutely one of those. Like the story of God of war is so great and so compelling. It's absolutely wonderful. But I will tell you right now, I don't know anything about horizon mm -hmm. zero dawn. I, I've, I mean, obviously I've seen the game all over the place, but I've never watched a cutscene movie of it. I really don't know much about, it. but Hey, if it's one of those ones, if it's on the level of the last of us or, God of War, this can't be bad. Anyway, Rob, you're hearing about this. You know, when they first announced PlayStation Studios, a lot of people were, yeah, but what does that mean? Like, they'll come up with one little project or whatever. They seem to be very, very serious about this. They're moving full steam ahead. What do you make of this? Well, when we first saw um, uh, Uncharted, we saw the logo. I remember us talking about it. First time that, we saw that, it. First time that logo, the PlayStation, PlayStation Studios logo. One of the things that, that I was uh, like, what? Back in February, they announced the Twisted Metal That's series right. yep. for Peacock, and that Anthony Mackie is starring in. Now, when I bought my PlayStation 3, actually, it was bought for me. When I was gifted with the PlayStation 3 back in, I want to say 2007, one of the games that I could not get enough of was Twisted Metal Black. And I, it, was, it was crazy. And so this, I didn't, until just now, listen to this. The half-hour action comedy, half-hour? We'll see Mackie play John Doe, a smart-ass milkman who talks as fast as he drives. With no memory of his past, John gets a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity to make his wish of finding community come true, but only if he can survive an onslaught of savage vehicular combat. With the help of a trigger-happy car thief, he'll face savage marauders driving vehicles of destruction and other dangers of the open road, including a deranged clown who drives an all-too-familiar ice cream truck. <laughs> now, I remember hearing this. I'm like... To me, uh, uh, this is the greatest thing ever. And now that we're now that we're getting a God of War, I mean, we're gonna get God of War, and we're getting, I mean, Last of Us, and we've got it's it's Craig Mazin who did Chernobyl. Yep, and so, did Limitless, the television series. Yeah, I mean, it's it's <laughs> we're getting. I mean, this is amazing. If it's good, I mean, we're getting highbrow stuff, like you said, and they're spreading the wealth across multiple outlets. So, I mean, if they can keep the level of like, I can't believe they're doing Twisted Metal Black. But if they keep the level high, we should be getting some good entertainment. You know, it's funny, too. This kind of doubles down on a conversation I was having about Sony in general. Because there's been a lot of discussion lately about, you know, Sony's the only major studio without a streaming platform. It's not going to hurt them. But we found out at CinemaCon, Sony's like, nah. All you fools want to do streaming services? By the way, I love the streaming service. Don't get right. He goes, we're going to sit back. We're going to be the only studio that stays exclusive to producing this stuff. Y'all can throw your money at us. Yes. Mm -hmm. And that's exactly what they're doing now. They're, they're making all this product. It's like, you guys create these streaming services that you're starving for content. Mm -hmm. We'll let you throw all the money at us. And we'll produce this stuff and feed out. And they're doing business with HBO. They're doing business with Amazon. They're doing business with Netflix. I mean, they don't have Peacock. any exclusivity. They don't have any exclusivity <laughs> and they are like laughing all the way to the bank right now. Anyway, 
Aaron, you hear about these video game adaptations coming, but also the fact that it seems to double down on this principle, this philosophy Sony seems to have, like, we'll create it, you buy it from us. Mm -hmm. What do you take away from this? Well, what's also, you know, interesting about, you know, going back to Uncharted and we talk about how it didn't necessarily have the best critical response. I think it had like a 41% on Rotten Tomatoes, but the audience score was 90%. So clearly <laughs> it was... Res yeah, Ray, yeah, Ray, Ray feels sweet <laughs> justification. And specifically because baby. Ray was going on creating a lot of online profiles that were all <laughs> fake right. and voting. Uh, for, yeah. Yes, but the movie also, you know, when we talk about what makes a movie viable financially, we have to look, it's not just how much money it made. You know, the movie made almost $400 million, but it's also how much the movie was made for so that you can compare those things. The movie was made for around $120 million. If these video game movies can stay in the 100 to $150 million range and they can come out and even make 200 million, they're still coming out on top. And as long as they're making more than they're spending, technically it is a box office success. You know, we also see movies, you know, yeah, they're historically video game movies have not necessarily done well, but then that is uh, balanced out by a franchise like Sonic the Hedgehog, which has done exponentially well and is based on video game yep. IP. And IP is where it's at. I recently had a conversation with my management company, the same management company who produced Uncharted. And we talked about this trend and they said our focus as a company is IP. So they were like, if you have any interest in writing a book, in acquiring a, 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 a anything that is available, get it because our whole thing is about building upon uh, existing IP. That way you don't have to rely on writers and creatives coming up with everything. There's already something there. And I think that Sony made a great decision by saying, we're gonna let you guys spread yourselves thin creatively. We're gonna focus on what we know and we're gonna create an entire division on existing IP that can, as you said, have, world, have a life in film, have a life in streaming and have a life in all these and different- And already does in games already does in games that already has a big following. And I love the fact that they are, uh, they're not just sticking to one platform. They're kind of doing a, a, a flight. You know, if you're not exactly sure which whiskey you prefer, you can do a flight of whiskeys and you can go, I like that one. So that's what, that's what I'm comparing this to because I'm a drunk. <laughs> Me and, too. <laughs> guys, question is for you. What do you think about this? Sony has now made it official. Zero Dawn Horizon is moving forward. God of War is moving forward. They also got Gran Turismo, who they haven't picked a dance partner with yet for that, but that's coming as well. Lots of stuff coming. What do you think about their approach right now? Whatever you guys think, jump down to the comment section below and leave your thoughts there. All right, guys. With that down, we're going to take a second here and thank the sponsor of today's episode of The John Campia Show. I use them. I love them. They've saved me like over 60% of my phone bills. The wonderful folks over at Mint Mobile. Guys, we want to thank the sponsor of today's video, Mint Mobile. You know the one with the delightful ads with good Canadian kid Ryan Reynolds? So look, after years of fine print contracts and getting ripped off by big wireless providers, if we've learned anything, is that there's always a catch. So when I first heard that Mint Mobile offers premium wireless starting at just $15 a month, I thought, what's the catch? But after talking to them and using their service, it all made sense. There isn't a catch. And guys, that's no joke because for years I've been using one of the major providers and it was fine. But I switched over to Mint Mobile a little while ago. The service has been fantastic. And the big difference is I'm now paying about one third of what I was paying before. And the best part for anybody who just hates their phone bills is that Mint Mobile offers premium wireless for just $15 a month. All their plans come with unlimited talk and text plus high speed data delivered on the nation's largest 5G network. Use your phone with any Mint Mobile plan and keep your same phone number along with all your existing contacts. To get your new wireless plan for just 15 bucks a month and get the plan shipped to your door for free, go to mintmobile.com slash campia. That's mintmobile.com slash campia. Cut your wireless bill to 15 bucks a month at mintmobile.com slash campia. And again, big thank you to the folks at Mint Mobile. Uh, no kidding, guys. I'm literally spending, uh, no joke, no hyperbole, a third of what I was spending before. My service is great. Go down, check out the link below. Because, guys, when you support our sponsors, you're also supporting our show. Guys, what are you doing? Switch over. I don't care who your service provider is right now. Switch over.
I had this conversation with Tom last night. I said, I was talking, I had this long conversation with John about Mint Mobile. And he was like, I don't know what that is. And I go, well, we're going to do a lot of reading on it and we're going to switch because you said that they're on the, because I was like, because I I said to you, I said, well, what about all of their, my concern is do, am I going to have access because you don't have all the towers yes, but they do but they do they have all the team so yeah towers. guys by, by all means go check it out and uh you'll be glad uh, that you did by the way also so, i want to interrupt real quick yeah a future millionaire who has been whose actor level sent a message one he of said, our members on the yeah. channel he says love you guys currently listening while i deliver mail at work nice glad to ha- have rob back yeah. been a fan since 2014. Well, thank you so much I, man can I say something like the mailman, especially or whoever delivers mail in the in the heat sometimes? That's why whenever I'm home, I always have a frozen water bottle, maybe some sodas, whatever they like. I always get the mail, offer them some, you know. Yeah, they, we they leave a little, on especially hot days. We leave a little mini cooler out there with a note that says, you know, free water, please take. And we put yeah, some you cold water of, bottles out see, there for can, our mail in people. In Canada, it's a different it's a different thing because you got your mail delivery people. They're working in minus twenty. <laughs> you got to put <laughs> hand warmers yeah, in yeah, there. Like, yeah. Like, like different. Yeah, you got to appreciate and what they do. the summer. All right, guys, with that all down, <laughs> let's move on to summer. our, what is it? Our second main topic today. That's right. Aaron, <laughs> what is main topic number two? Our second topic is from Connor. Hi, John and gang. Hello. Hope y'all are doing well. We are. News just broke from IGN that a Winnie the Pooh horror movie titled Winnie the Pooh, Blood and Honey is in development. <laughs> okay, I'd be lying if I said I wasn't morbidly curious. What are your thoughts? Thanks and bring on the filthy. I think this is the greatest thing in the history of creation. <laughs> I think this, when I saw this, for those of you who may have missed it, there is a horror movie coming out called Winnie the Pooh, Blood and Honey. Oh, and I see what you got there. Erin brought in her own little uh, Pooh Bear there for just for the occasion. There. Yes, I took this out of my son's crib this morning. Yeah, you might want to take it out there after <laughs> we talk about this. Yeah. Because, yes, there is a little horror film about Winnie the Pooh. <laughs> this comes to us from the folks over at Bloody Disgusting Right the following. Strange, that picture is horrifying. Strange things can start to happen when beloved characters slip into public domain and become horror movie and upcoming horror movie Winnie the Pooh, Blood and Honey is sure, sure is a testament to that. The upcoming horror movie, which is of course not related to Disney in any way, shape or form. (laughs) Shocker. Turns the anthropomorphic yellow teddy bear into a monstrous murderer. How is this even allowed, you ask? Well, the classic story entered into the public domain at the start of this year, which means anyone and everyone is now free to do with poo as they please. No plot details are available at this time, but it looks like the movie centers around a killer wearing a Winnie the Pooh mask, or maybe that's actually a man-bear hybrid. A twisted (laughs) version of Piglet also appears in the first look images, so expect a full-on perversion of the classic tale. All right, so... Just to go on what they were just talking about here. When something is in the public domain, anybody can make a movie of that. Listen, right now, we could make a Thor. The John Campion show, Carson Drive Media, we could make a Thor movie if we want. Call it Thor. uh, Aaron and Rob. Thunder. (laughs) I don't know. Thunder of the (laughs) Deputy. Whatever whatever you want to call it. (laughs) We could make our own Thor movie. Because Thor is in the public domain. Right. Now, what we can't do is do a Thor movie and then do something that, say, Marvel has done and made up with Thor. Like, they made uh, Stormbreaker, right? So we couldn't do a Thor movie and have Stormbreaker. But we could make up our own (laughs) Thor movie based on the original mythology and go off that. And that's what we can do. Winnie the Pooh is now in public domain, which means somebody can come along and make this wickedly twisted idea of Winnie the Pooh. Let's, let's bring up some images if we've got them here. Sure. I want to, let's bring up that website, uh, the bloody disgusting site, because if we scroll down, first of all, that looks, let's go down to the picture where we see Piglet. Cause that's the one that I, I really want to see. So this is look Whoa. at, look at Piglet. Oh, oh my God. I want, there we go. Wait, but who is in the hot tub? I'm sorry. I have to, I'm just, this is classic horse slasher. <laughs> this is 80s. classic horse. And I'm here for it. I mean, just you know, relaxing, and all of a sudden, Winnie the Pooh and Piglet are gonna come and murder you in Rob, your just sleep. Just whisper anything you want no. said, and I'll say it because then our sponsors will be okay with it. It's coming from a woman. It's okay. No, 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 no. I, I was just saying that that I'm kind of disappointed that it's killers like like wearing masks. No, we don't. No, 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 no. I don't think it is. 
I, I, I honestly think this is uh, this an is actual. Yeah, like I said in the, in the, in the article, bear. this is a these are hybrid. Yeah, bear I, mean, man I and, hope I hope so because and I think that they should get the guy, the guy, the guy that does Winnie the Pooh's voice and those. Well, you know, he's passed away. I know, but there's got to be a sound like dude. If he sounded like that, I'd be all in. I don't know. I kind of want him to sound like James Earl Jones. <laughs> <laughs> oh God! <laughs> so they like, think cocaine. That there, human then. blood is their honey. I mean, and that's I what they're after the honey here. in this picture. So, you know, where's the blood? <laughs> this, there it is. Like, look, if, like, I'm going <laughs> to well, say this. They called it that, right? Mm -hmm. This is a massive missed opportunity. If the movie ends up being just a couple of yahoos in masks, F that. I, yeah, I, have, yeah. I, have, no, I have no interest in this movie. Yeah. But if these are living <laughs> bear human hybrids, living pig human hybrids, and it's like winning the poo... Like hunting for revenge on Christopher Robin, who discarded him when he was a child, then this could be the greatest thing ever. Ray, I'm sure you've got some thought. Do you want to watch this? What do you think? Robin. <laughs> now, where's, uh, where's, uh, where's uh, Chris? We need Chris here. I mean, she maybe, would love this maybe movie. he's the twisted master behind this whole thing. Maybe Christopher Robin grew up to be twisted. Oh, yeah. And he's jaded it's definitely and Christopher Robin. He will be making an appearance, and he I, is old and grisly. And I kind of want Sam Elliott to play him. <laughs> <laughs> if Sam, I'm just saying, I don't know if you guys have started production, but if you haven't, call Sam. Sam Elliott is put an old. Put him as an old, grizzled Christopher Robin. Um, yeah, I think that's that, that's, that's a great the, idea. Life's given Thank me a lot of pain, and you're all okay, going to pay so, for it. So now that we're now that we're quoting, I was actually looking up some Winnie the Pooh quotes that I was like, these have to be in the movie. Number one, uh, Winnie the Pooh says, "I'm so rumbly in my tummy." <laughs> Uh, Piglet says, I wonder what's going to happen exciting today. And then Winnie the Pooh also says, before beginning a hunt, it is wise to ask someone what you are looking for before you begin looking for it. There's all kinds of really fantastic quotes that I think could really uh, work well for this. You know, when I went into baby's room to this morning, I told him about, you know, because every day we have a conversation with our little Pooh bear. And Pooh says, are you going to make a poo for me today? Because if you have a baby, you know it's really important that they poop. My God, day. I hope he says this in the movie. Uh, yes, he go, <laughs> literally going up. Are you going to make a poop for me today? And so when I told my child about this, he immediately spit up and then he shit his pants. So we were like, yay, success. Um, oh, your son. My, I thought you were talking about Tom. So. Well, Tom <laughs> did. And then, you know, yeah, it was a family affair. No, so uh, I, I'm, I, when I first heard this, I thought, you know, just because you can doesn't necessarily mean you should. But the more that I think about it and then seeing these images, if it is actually the hybrid, as you say, right. I'm here for it. And then where's Tigger? Where's Eeyore? What? What's like? How? Like, is Eeyore gonna have like long emo black hair too? <laughs> or I mean, I I don't know. And Tigger is methed out, like like oh, literally just out. like yeah. methed out, yeah, he's he's all bouncing around, <laughs> you know, crazy. Oh, oh, oh. I mean, I want I want to be scratching himself. So yeah, yeah where's the? Ah <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, and then Rue. Oh no no, you can't touch Rue. Oh you yeah, can't you touch got Rue. You got to touch all of them. Yeah, yeah. Dude, all the uh, that, that, that <laughs> anyway, guys. Question Shot is for you: <laughs> What do you think about this? They're doing a horror version of Winnie the Pooh called Winnie the Pooh: Blood and Honey. I think this is the greatest thing I'm going to hear all week. Whatever you guys think about it, jump down to the comment section below <laughs> and leave your thoughts there. All right, guys. With that down, let's move on to main topic number three. Aaron, what is our third main topic today? This comes to us from Up and Adam. Hey, Campiaverse. Hello. Did you guys see that Marvel Disney has improved the CGI already for the She-Hulk trailer? Uh, the trailer released on Disney Plus has been all touched up. There's a great article on the Direct which shows images from the original YouTube trailer side by side with images from the new Disney Plus version. Hopefully this will quiet down some of the naysayers. Thanks and bring on the thunder. All right. Thanks a lot for that up and Adam. I love that username, by the way. That's really cool. So, yeah, look, obviously last week the first She-Hulk trailer arrived, which look admittedly i am not the world's foremost expert on she hulk i've definitely read some of it but i like i don't know all the ins and outs in the history and the lore of the character as far as i was concerned that trailer was so bang on accurate to the tone of she hulk and like i just loved it and you know i had been wanting you know we talked 
like months ago about man whatever they do with the she-hulk if they can do it like an ally mcbeal yeah uh, with she-hulk in it that would be perfect and on many levels that trailer to me was absolutely perfect the one thing well there are a couple things that that kind of rubbed me a little bit the wrong way but one of the things that stood out as being not so high quality was the cgi particularly just on she hulk like the cgi and hulk thought i thought looked pretty good the cgi on abomination for the little bit that we saw him looked pretty good to me uh, of course she hulk is supposed to be more human looking than anything else so there's a little bit of uncanny valley and so whatever i i, I wish i had a set of keys on me right here because i honestly don't know why there are people who make such a big deal out of about whether the cgi was because i agree the cgi was off i agree i worked in the field the cgi field i agree the cgi was off but th this notion that that makes or breaks the trailer i never understood that it's like it's like holding up a set of keys the movie we're all like oh, the, oh we're so easily distracted like oh, oh I, I, I was I, wondering like, what the, the keys whole trailer were yeah that's what the keys for oh, okay. i like we're so distracted from it but whatever <clears throat> it was what it was well apparently it wasn't the final render because Disney Plus has now put up the trailer on Disney Plus, and it's clearly a different render of the character. Let's let's take a look at come a couple of these images here, as uh, Jonathan brings us up. So it, let's scroll down to that one I was talking about. The one where you can really see it is this mm -hmm. one here. So stop right there, Jonathan. So this is the YouTube video. Now it's going to be very difficult for you guys at home because you are watching through compressed internet streaming YouTube right now, but. This is the one from the YouTube one. You can see very little texture. Like the detail in the eyes and all that kind of stuff is great. Yeah, but it just looks a little plastic, right? Yeah. Now, if you scroll down a little bit now to the Disney version of it, to the Disney Plus version of it, you can clearly see, I mean, just look at the forehead. Now, again, if you're looking at the pictures yourselves on your computer, aside from our live stream here, you'll see it more. There's far more detail. You can actually see more lines, pores, uh, minor imperfections, all these, the, these things that just give it a little bit more life. You see it a lot too in the chin, the nose. There's a little bit more ri rise in the cheekbones. Mm -hmm. It just looks a little bit more, I, I hate using the word here, but real. It just looks a little bit more real. And you can see those changes throughout the trailer. Now, will this be enough? Let's face it. There are some people who went into the Hulk trailer that went hunting for things to hate about it. Sure. They mm -hmm. need to come up with a reason why it sucks, right? But will this be enough to win over some people? I, maybe. I, I think it might be. I think there are going to be some people who are like, they needed to fix it. There, they fixed it. See, we told you they needed to fix it. And that's perfectly <laughs> fine. There are going to be some people that just for legitimate reasons saw the She-Hulk trailer and just didn't like it. And there's nothing wrong. That's fair. So just doing a little bit more detail on She-Hulk's forehead is not going to win those people over. On, and that's for legitimate enough reasons. But I think for some people it will, and it definitely does look better. Here's the thing for me, though. I don't care. It doesn't, to me, it doesn't make the trailer any better. It's still the same dialogue. It's still the same characters. The jokes that I thought were funny were still funny. The things in it that didn't work for me still don't work for me. So do I think they fixed the CGI a bit? Yes, it's an improvement. Does that make me like the trailer anymore? Honestly, no. Like, I already like the trailer. It doesn't increase my love for it. But anyway, Rob, you weren't here when we were talking about no. the GL trailer, unfortunately. What did what were your impressions of the first version of it, and what do you think about the updated version? Well, first of all, I, I like the trailer. Mm -hmm. I mean, I really like John Byrne's run on, on She-Hulk, which was very breaking the fourth wall and very self-reflexive. And a friend of mine, I have a friend who actually worked on this show and, and told me a little bit about it and thought it was going to be a good show, funny, unique you know, the idea that they're doing a, a a workplace legal comedy like an Ally McBeal, that just shows that Marvel is 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 dipping their their toes into those different genres, like we always talked about. Ant Man's a heist movie. Winter Soldier is a, a 70s conspiracy thriller. Why not do a David Kelly legal comedy mm -hmm. with which is right out of the comic. Now, for me, you know, John, anytime the, the CG could be absolutely perfect, but when you have a CG character interacting with a human being, I mean, Thanos is one thing because we don't know what a Mad Titan looks like. Yeah, he's it's a totally alien, yeah, foreign-looking yeah, thing. Yeah, so right. you're, when you're looking at Thanos, by the way, that's the greatest CG character ever created, but still, when you go back and you look at Gollum, for instance, one of the great early CG creatures interacting with, well, hobbits, human beings, 
there's always going to be a little bit of the uncanny valley in it, no matter how good the CG is, if only because that shade of green doesn't exist on an human animal skin. or yeah. human mm-hmm. skin. So mm-hmm. there's no way around it. Like, there's no way people are like, oh, the CG is terrible. I mean, but is it? Is it? I mean, the CG, it's, it's, is like that detail is amazing. But, you know, even if you go back and it does look a little waxy, like, how yes, does, grow up just a little bit, Jonathan. How the does version there? How does a Hulk? How uh, maybe a Hulk has waxier skin? Like it's, it's <laughs> you know, it's it's like when you're looking at it, when you're watching a CG character interacting in the human world. It, sometimes it doesn't matter how good the CG is because the color is unnatural. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So you're like, eh. So like you, it didn't bother me. Like I'm like that's She Hulk. Like if you're gonna buy, if you if you're gonna buy into the show. <laughs> I think you're going to buy into it. It really it comes down to it really comes down to the Tatiana Maslans, Maslansky, Maslani, Mas, uh, Maslani. Thinking of Paul Maslansky. Good Canadian kid, by the um, way. She's an incredible actress, mm-hmm. and and if she sells the role, and you like her, you'll like the show as long as it's well written. Yeah, I, I mean, one of the other things too is like I brought this up before. I understand going into it that this is still going to be a TV budget. Yeah. This isn't a feature film budget right. where they're spending $100 million per hour uh, in a movie. Here, you're maybe looking at about 30 to $25 million per hour. So I, I'm not expecting movie quality per se, but I was still pretty impressed with how Hulk looked. And, and yeah, I think the She-Hulk is improved. I still don't think she looks fantastic, but I, I think it's improved. By the way, I, I personally think the greatest CGI character of all time, Thanos is right up there, uh, Caesar. Uh, oh yeah, in, oh, yeah. Um, yeah. Planet, of the Apes. Planet of the Apes. Mm-hmm. Also, uh, as uh, Andy Circus performed right. character, the king. Anyway, mm-hmm. Chris, you see this, Chris? Sorry, <laughs> I'm so used to Chris being in that seat. I will absolutely play the role of Chris today. Uh, you happily, see if this, I could Aaron. fill her shoes. What do you think? Do you think <clears throat> does this stand out to you? Like, can you notice the differences here now too? And does that make a big difference to you? Well, what's funny to me is that when I look at the uh, the first image, she looks like the green version of every person on Instagram right now. <laughs> And that's what's so funny to me is that we are literally in a time period where like people on Instagram are putting filters on their face to erase their pores, to erase their fine lines, to give themselves the waxy look that we have right here. And everyone's like, no, I believe that she's green, but I don't believe that she doesn't have laugh lines. You need to age her. I mean, and so now all of a sudden we see her nasal labial folds on the side of her, on the side of her mouth are a little bit more defined. Yes. She has more, you know, a few more fine lines on her forehead as she would at that age. But I am actually like loving the idea that we don't want her to look like she's been Botoxed and shot to death with fillers and things <laughs> to give her the waxy look that people are spending billions upon billions of dollars to achieve and then using filters on Snapchat and Instagram to get. So I think that it's actually kind of a um, I'm looking at this from the perspective of the beauty industry and going, oh, wow, what an interesting thing that people want to say. I also think, hey, you know what? Good on Disney for releasing the trailer and giving us so much to talk about and then now being like, oh, okay, so yeah, fixed it. And what's next? What else do you have to complain about? Nothing? Okay, great. Because I also loved this trailer. I thought it was fun. I thought it was exciting. You know, I definitely wanted her to have... I I, I didn't love the whole, like, I want a boyfriend aspect, but... I will admit, yes, you know, when I was a single woman and, you know, having a successful career, I was still like, I want to play friends. So it does play true to life. As, you know, maybe I just don't. I was going to say, don't forget, you and I had conversations. I know, during that I know, life, I right? know. However, but I will say, I, I, you know what it reminded me of, actually? It reminded me, do you remember when those photos were released of Adrian Pilecki as Wonder Woman? Yeah. Oh, yeah. And yeah. people went bonkers. Yeah. Like, like the talk talk about Chris's favorite line of butt puckering. I mean, butt puckering bananas. People went. Oh, that was from yesterday's show. Um, I missed butt puckering. You missed yes. butt puckering. Yes, <laughs> people went butt puckering bananas on that Wonder Woman outfit. But the thing about it was, they didn't back it up with any substance. People going getting upset about 
uh, She-Hulk not having pores and laugh lines, that's not a big deal to me because she has substance and the story has weight and humor. And, uh, and and I'm just really excited about this. And if the biggest thing people have to complain about is the fact that she doesn't have enough wrinkles or pores, uh, fantastic. That's the world I want to live in. Uh, Save wanna... me a lot of money on Botox and fillers one day. I want to point out, John, we grew up watching Lou Ferrigno painted green. Yeah, which I with, never want yeah. to see again. With, and it's it's like, I love that show, you know. Because, oh, so did I. And Absolutely. by the end, you know, when you heard that the the piano tinkle of that music dun, as he would dun, walk dun, away, dun. I, it got me every time. And that's it, it. Great characters, great story, great writing, always overcomes visual effects. I mean, think about it. Most people can't even watch most movies made before Star Wars that are science fiction or fantasy because mm-hmm. they complain about. The effects, like I love Ray Harryhausen's stop motion animation. You know, Jason the Argonauts, Argonauts fighting yeah. the skeletons. I don't not enjoy that movie anymore because the effects, the effects industry has come so far. So if if the show is good and it's well written and the performances are great, people aren't going to care. Well, yeah, I also bring this up too. I mentioned this last week, but at the time, the greatest single thing in the history of visual effects and whatever was Jar Jar Binks. Mm. What they were like, I know it's hard for us to pack picture now, but go back to that that time when the Phantom Menace was coming out. What they were able to do with Jar Jar Binks as a CGI character that actual human actors were interacting with was by far the greatest thing ever. Did not make that character any good. No. But I will say this too. I, I will say this. Can we bring up that picture once again there, Jonathan? I will say this. If you look at the top one, when I look at the top one, let's scroll up a little bit. Uh, when I look at this one and you say, is that Tatiana Mislani just in makeup? I can look at this picture. Now, granted, I worked in visual effects, but I can look at this picture and go, no. That, no. Like, it, it, there's no part of me that believes that's actually Tatiana Mislani just in green makeup. I don't buy it. But if you scroll down to the lower one, when I look at that, I go, I could buy it. Like if you were just to show me that picture and say, this is actually Tatiana Maslany just in makeup. Mm-hmm. There's a part of me that might buy into that. So I guess that's a good illustration well, of the improvement. Too. You know, the difference in the greens, it almost looks like somebody put makeup on her because mm-hmm. it's, it's, it's not, you see a lot more of the skin tones coming through and, and that's more yellows it. coming through. Yeah. yeah. And that's yeah. how skin actually looks. You know, skin is not one color. Your cheeks get flush, your forehead, you know, your neck looks sometimes a different shade because it doesn't have as much sun exposure. I mean, it does, it, it looks fantastic. Yeah. And skin it's, is translucent. It's, it's definitely an improvement. No doubt there. Anyway, guys, question is for you. What do you think about this? Apparently, Disney made some upgrades, probably some more proper final renders on what they had there. But does it? really make that big of a difference do you even notice the difference and even if you do does that make the trailer better for you whatever you guys think about that jump down to the comment section below and leave your thoughts there all right guys with that down let's move into our fourth and final main topic today aaron what is our fourth main topic today our fourth main topic comes from steve calderon hi john and crew hello Photos from this set of the upcoming Blue Beetle movie surfaced online. The pics show our first look of lead star Zolo Miraduena, 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 uh, in the Blue Beetle costume. What are your thoughts on the costume? All right. Thanks a lot for saying that in, Steve. There has been a lot to talk about with regards to Blue Beetle. Number one, when they just announced that they were doing it, which is great. Because I honestly, despite a couple of years ago, there were reports of Warner Brothers wanting to do a buddy cop movie of Booster Gold and Blue Beetle that got everybody kind of excited. That obviously didn't go anywhere and it never happened. And honestly, if you'd ask me, do I think they'd ever do a Blue Beetle movie? Well, do I think they'd do one within the next five or six or seven years? I probably would have said no. Then they announced they were going to do it and it was going to be on HBO Max. But then fast forward a few weeks after that, they go, you know what? No. This is a theatrical film. This movie is going to go to theaters where there's movies belong. And then, of course, they cast the kid from Cobra Kai. I am not a Cobra Kai fan, but everybody else on the planet is. <laughs> so, that, and you know what? And I do like this kid. The episodes, of, I do like this kid in Zolo. I don't know how to pronounce his last name either. Miraduena, I believe. Miraduena? I'll buy it. So, that, that's all that's been coming together and it looks good. And now, some pictures have come out from the set. And I got to say... They look 
pretty darn good. Uh, this comes to us from the folks. We're, we'll go back to these images in a second. This comes to us from the folks screen right write the following. The first batch of set photos from Warner Brothers' upcoming Blue Beetle live-action adaptation reveals the DC hero's costume. One of Warner Brothers' future DCU projects is Blue Beetle, starring Cobra Kai star Zolo Maraduena uh, as Jaime Reyes. While the teenage hero made his live-action debut in Smallville Season 10, Jaime finally gets the cinematic treatment over 10 years later. Blue Beetle centers on Jaime, who one day discovers a powerful alien scarab that turns him into the iconic DC titular hero. And now, now let's bring up those, those other images there. Like, I looked at that, and number one, does it look a little bit Halloween costume? Yeah, but damn good. I, I think it looks really good. And you know what? I have no doubt this is going to be one of those things where they have a base costume for the character that they are going to touch up with CGI as kind of like um, uh, Henry Cavill in Man of Steel, where he has the costume, but there was no cape. The cape right. was all added afterwards in CGI so the cape so they could control and all that kind of stuff. I have a feeling this is probably the base costume. They're probably going to do CGI over top of it as well. But I got to say, I am somebody who... Is the costume really all that important to me? No. The, the costume in these things, again, Black Lightning, stupidest looking costume <laughs> in all of television and movies, but damn, I really love that show. So it doesn't really matter to me. But I do have to say, I think this looks pretty good. He looks good in it too. Because when they announced that they're doing the Jaime Reyes version, I thought, what about Cord? Like, Doing that, amp, you know what? I'm not even worried about that anymore. He looks great in this. So I'm excited by the look of it. Doesn't mean the movie's going to be any good. But hey, if I'd rather like or not like a costume, I'd rather like it. And that looks pretty slick. Rob, you take a look at this. Uh, how do you think it looks to you overall? How do you think they're going to play it out in the movie itself? And what are your thoughts? Well, like you, I mean, I'm, I'm a Ted Cord guy. You know, I love Blue Beetle and, and Booster Gold together, especially in the pages of Justice League International. But that looks good to me. I mean, people might say, hey, it's a little Power Rangers, but I'm like, it's kind of supposed to be. Now, nah, Power Rangers is a little Blue Beetle. <laughs> <laughs> right, right. But I, I think this costume looks great. I mean, I think, like you said, it'll probably be enhanced in some way. But, you know, again, when you're looking at that, I, I love the face. You know, I love the, the and, 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 you know, it's really difficult when you see these costumes in broad daylight because they're going to be lit. You know, they're not under yeah, lighting conditions yeah. and you're looking at this, but, but this looks good. Even in the, um, like where the, I guess the, 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 the arms come or the legs the come, even the, the detail in that kind of purplish, the lower part of the suit, there's a lot of detail there. Uh, it's going to look great on camera. And I think what we're seeing is that looks like the blue beetle from the comics. And I'm like, that's, that's cool. Right or it wrong. If I say this, do you agree or disagree with me? When I say, when you look at this image, like, I think they're definitely going to do CGI wise. They're definitely going to do what they do with Spider-Man's eyes. Like you're, they're going to give, mm. they're oh, yeah, gonna yeah. give like, they're going to probably CG the eyes, give some life to the eyes, all that kind of stuff. Probably a lot of the other things on the suit too. Anyway, Aaron, I'm actually really curious to ask you about this because I'm going to go out on a limb that you've never read a Blue Beetle comic. So just looking at this cold, just, just seeing this outfit and seeing this character, what do you think? What does it jump out to you? What do you think? I think this looks fantastic fantastic absolutely beautiful and and even without the cgi additions which they're absolutely they're 100 going to make to it the level of detail and if you think about the fact that this is not a staged photo that you know the marketing team released that has been retouched and uh, a, a the colors altered in any way. These colors are vibrant. That light blue that's on the chest plate and over the deltoid area and on the helmet, I think is a really beautiful blue. I love the purple that, Tom, the, that Rob was talking about. And then these the claws that are wrapped around. The difference in color is vibrant enough. And if you make it pop with that CGI, it's just going to be explosive. And looking at, I was just pulling up some images of Blue Beetle from the comic, and you're absolutely right. What they're going to do with the eyes is going to be so menacing and exciting and piercing. Um, I, I just think this looks fantastic. Again, you have to take into consideration that this is a photo, and this is clearly an aerial photo, like something taken from, looks like it was taken from far away and zoomed in a little and bit. elevated, yeah. Yeah, a little slightly elevated. This is not a professional shot. This was shot on someone's iPhone, and it looks fantastic. 
And even without the helmet on, he looks really good in the costume. He It fits. It works. Um, my big thing is, man, that looks so hot. Thank yeah. God he's got yeah. his umbrella person behind him. But I, I, I mean, I don't even, I guess it's made... I'd be so curious and fascinated to find out what it's actually made of because it looks like it's made of a, a thick rubber polymer kind of stuff. Yeah. I mean, Rob, you have some experience it, in this. It looks really hot. Yeah. Right. Rob wears a lot of thick polymer. Oh, yeah. That's, that's, yeah. that's, that's, that's <laughs> right. right. Yes, I do. I, I like do want to say, though, you speak, if, sorry, you were just reminding me um, when you said the thing about the, uh, the, the Power Rangers. Okay. Whoever says Power that this looks anything like Power Rangers is clearly high because if you look <laughs> at photos of the Power Rangers, they were wearing straight up spandex. That well, looked, the movie version of them, they, oh. they they borrowed a little bit more from a more modern aesthetic. But I but love still. The, I love the fact that you say that this looks like a Halloween costume because that just shows how bougie you are and that you've been going to too many <laughs> Comic Cons. Because the, if you go to any Halloween outside of like. Los Angeles area hardcore cosplayers yeah right like I'm talking that that is no hollow that is definitely an expensive Halloween costume and if you're dropping that kind of cash on Halloween good for you but I think it looks great and it actually makes me really excited about this movie um just because this costume is giving me so much insight into who this character is and what I also love about it is the fact that since he has this full covered helmet um obviously that's what the character in the comic book wears but because there's no exposure of his face unless he specifically takes off this helmet we're going to see a lot of really cool action stuff because they're going to put a mega stuff oh, there's going to be a there. lot of cgi in this a lot yeah. of cgi hey ray i wanted to ask you like what do you think about the look of do you like it i actually like the masks uh, the close-up of the masks the head kind of looks a little too big but i mean it's because there's a human inside that costume but um i just want to point out that um is this the first latino like uh dc character lead that uh i want to say yes yeah because marvel has one coming with i still understand uh, why El El why they El couldn't El cast El a real actor but they got bad yeah. bunny so they got that thing coming with bad bunny well, over go on the marvel. ghost rider i mean um, it wasn't ghost rider oh, right, well they, right. yeah they did that on television they didn't do yeah, that yeah. in the movies right but this is dc's I think this might be their first Latino I, one. Yeah. I'm just saying, give it up for the Latinos. They get their, they get uh, you know, to be in the front forefront of a superhero movie. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And then like the little kids buying all these figures. You know, hopefully it's good. Hopefully it's good. All right, guys. Question is for you. The first images we've seen from the set was Zolo in the Blue Beetle costume. I actually think it looks fantastic. Maybe you don't. Maybe maybe you're kind of looking for a little bit of a different iteration. Whatever you guys think about it, jump down to the comment section below and leave your thoughts there. Okay, guys. With all that down, we are now going to open up the Super Chats for you, and we're going to spend the second half of the show taking your thoughts, comments, observations, theories, questions, whatever you guys want to have. Jump into the Super Chats and fire them, and we'll read those off. But before we get to those, we want to thank another sponsor of the John Campia channel, our friends over at Liquid IV. We want to take a minute and thank the sponsors of this video, Liquid IV. Now listen, just one stick of Liquid IV added to 16 ounces of water will hydrate you faster and more efficiently than just water alone. It contains five essential vitamins like B3, B5, B6, B12, and of course vitamin C with three times the electrolytes as traditional sports drinks. And what makes Liquid IV so effective is the science of cellular transport technology or CTT. You see, it's designed to enhance rapid absorption of water and other key ingredients into your bloodstream faster and more efficiently. You know, Ann and I get up pretty early in the morning to go to the gym because we can't go to the gym at any other time during the day. And for the last couple of weeks, I have been drinking one full glass of water with Liquid IV. And all I can tell you is you can feel the difference during the workout. So go and grab Liquid IV in bulk nationwide at Costco, or you can get 25% off when you go to liquidiv.com and use the code CAMPIA at checkout. That's 25% off anything you order when you use the promo code Campia, that's C-A-M-P-E-A, -E at liquidiv.com. Experience better hydration today when you go to liquidiv.com. And remember, use the promo code at checkout, Campia. And a big thank you to our friends over at Liquid IV for sponsoring the John Campy channel. Once again, guys, check out the links and the promo codes in the description below. When you guys support our sponsors, you're also supporting us. So thank you to them again. Okay, guys. 
We're not going to move on and l turn it over to you. We're going to talk about the things you want to talk about. You guys have fired in a bunch. It's going to only be open for another minute or two. So uh, if you got a thought or something you want to fire it in, fire it in quick. All right. Aaron, what are people talking about in the live chat? Well, we have some lovely support coming from John Wicked. And I'm so sorry. I'm going to butcher this uh, Prabhudada Mishra. Thank you so I much. I did well really as, good there. Oh, well, that. thank you so much. As well as Kevin Cow, who we have to thank for this little this little uh, hype bow okay. right yes, here. Thank you so much. And Alonzo um, Oka. Oka, Oka uh, Oka? Ochoa. Ochoa? Ochoa? That's sorry, probably better. Sorry, yep. sorry, Thank you, guys. Uh, Suthia sends in his $10 super chat and says, When I was four, living in a small apart apartment in Fullerton, I had jumped from the bathroom sink into the living room and busted my chin wide open. <laughs> I'd rather do that again than watch another second of Morbius. <laughs> wow. Yeah. I, <laughs> Poor Mor Morbius. Morbius. Look, I... I still don't think Morbius was an absolute train wreck. Uh, there were things about it, I, particularly the first act. I I liked the first act of the film. Yeah, didn't love the first, but I, I liked the first act of the film. It, it, it just kind of declined all the way to the end until you got like the worst post credit scenes in history. But uh, you guys know that was in my top five most anticipated films of the year. I was really excited for that movie. <laughs> I walked out so disappointed, but... Uh, I don't know if I'd rather bust my chin open than watch it again, but, uh, yeah, I, I don't, I have no plans on watching yeah. it again. He would rather Jackie Chan himself than watch Morbius. See, that, that, I was paying call attention. Back. Call I was back. paying attention, yes. All right, what's next? A. Marcellus sends in a $20 oh, Sam super Fisher. chat. Thank you. Um, oh, Sam Fisher, thank you. Sam Fisher sent in a $5 super chat, say, uh, one of two. Regarding my, uh, furious... Four, Fantastic Four. Fast, Fantastic Four. Thank you. Fantastic Four chemistry test question yesterday. I agree with Reed and Sue for the chemistry test. I only said Reed and Doom because they need to have that Batman Joker. It's right up here. Batman Joker. Back, Batman Joker dynamic of I think you and I are destined to do this forever. For me, if that is wrong, the movie falls apart just as much as if Reed and Sue are wrong. Now, the, here's the difference. Reed and Sue will be there for the entire franchise. Doom, not necessarily. I mean, so you you just do Doom. And by the way, Doom as a character they can use outside of Fantastic Four. By the way, there's nothing saying Kevin Feige has to introduce Doctor Doom in a Fantastic Four movie. He can introduce him in another movie. But the chemistry between Reed and Sue, there's, there's no wiggle room there. No. That's got to work. It's one of the reasons... Look, as much as I like Jessica Alba, and I've never been able to pronounce the name of the guy who played Reed Richards in those other Fantastic Four movies, but I, I, is it, I, I, I could I never am pronounce Grafad. it. I am Graf I've never not, been able to say it. I am Groot. It's pronounced I, I am, am Groot. Groot. That's nice. perfect. Those so, Irish names. Well, I I liked. I didn't mind his performance. And I didn't mind Jessica Alba's performance. I just didn't feel any chemistry with him. That's right. one of the many reasons those films didn't work. So Doom, just get a good Doom. But the chemistry, it's got to be Reed and Sue. It can't be. I don't know, Rob. What do you think about that? I totally agree because they're they're married. You know, they 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 should have that breezy interaction. But they're scientists, and but they have that knowing. I I mean, they're they're, and I totally agree with you. I think part of the reason that the other Fantastic Four movies at least those two didn't work was because I never believed they were a couple. Yeah. You just don't believe that because you know, your it's their interaction should be fun. Yeah. You know, we should mm -hmm. love them with their with their with their interaction. And if we don't if we don't have it, if we don't have that, then it's like they're not as much fun as they would be because sometimes they're going to bicker like a married couple bickers. Sometimes they're going to be full on scientists like how do we save the universe? And then they're also going to be the fun breezy uh, kind of like heart to heart. I used to uh, love heart to heart. Mm -hmm. I love that chemistry. You know, yeah. let's travel around the world, be rich and fabulous, and solve murders. You know, solve, <laughs> you know, figure out. Whoop. I love that. And that's what I would. I mean, I've never. I don't know why I brought up heart to heart. I haven't thought about that show in decades. But but you have it on physical media. Is that Robert I, Wagner? Yeah, that's right. And Stephanie Powers. That's right. You that's know, the real name. Yeah, I, I know. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Stephanie Powers as Stu Storm. Uh, next, this comes from A. Marcellus, who sends in a twenty dollars super chat. Thank you, Marcellus. I think a non CGI Final Fantasy movie could work. The great thing about Final Fantasy is that each game, with the exception of a few, are self contained stories. A movie series is not confined to the game. A movie series not confined to the games has great potential. Here's the problem. Here's the problem. The story structures of the Final Fantasy games 
because I played a whole ton of the Final Fantasy games when I was younger, right? Uh, I've never played the final. What's the the MMORPG of Final Fantasy? Um, uh, I forget the guys in the live chat. Help me out. What's the name of the the MMORPG version of? And I, ha I I haven't played that yet. I did load it up. I couldn't get it to work, unfortunately. But um, it the storytelling style of Final Fantasy I do not believe lends itself to the North American audience tastes. You know, it, it's just not something that works for the North American audience. So you would have to do one of two things. One, you'd have to make it pretty true to Final Fantasy and have it kind of alienate a lot of the North American audiences who don't like that style of storytelling. Or you'd have to adapt it a bunch so it fits the North American uh, audience sensibilities, but then you're going to alienate the hardcore fans of the, of the game. So I'm not sure if a live action one would work or not. I don't know, Rob, do you think they could do live action Final Fantasy? Again, I think that's been a problem with a lot of adaptations of like live action anime and stuff. I think that the the Eastern nature of it is part of its appeal. And with Final Fantasy, I think that the first thing they would do if they made a live action westernized version of it is remove the things that you were talking about. The 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 Easternness of it, the whether it's the the, the Asianness of it all. And I, I know that's why I'm attracted. I've always loved Japanese science fiction. People have talked about doing a space battleship Yamato or a Star Blazers live action film. I don't know if that would work. I don't know if American audiences would believe a live action battleship could be risen up from the bottom of the ocean and turned into a space ferry. I believe it. That's, I, I'm I, all in. I'm all in too. <laughs> I'm all in too. But but I think you're right. I mean, it would. it's not that it can't be done. Like, I kind of like the spirits within the CG movie, but that didn't feel like Final Fantasy to me. You know, I mean, uh, but I think it could look like anything else, John, it could be done. It just has to have the right writer and director who really understand how to shape the material. I think it, it, it's a hard thing to do. All right. What's next? Next comes from Andy, who says, one of two, I suggest watching The Fallout, an HBO original film on HBO Max. It st stars Jenna Ortega, a rising young actor who plays a school shooting survivor. It's a great, it's great topic. It's topical, emotional, and a haunting film about her character's perspective and how she and her fellow survivors survivors deal with trauma. Sorry, I'm this is hard one to talk about. Uh, fellow survivors deal with trauma of the tragedy. Uh, I have never heard of it. I mean, I, I mean, listen. Obviously, right now today, uh, that's a difficult thing to talk about yeah. in in general at all. So it's, I'm not going to lie to you; it's not one I'm going to watch anytime in the next couple of weeks. But that doesn't devalue what how great of a powerful movie it could be. Again, I've never heard of it up to this point, but I will keep it on my radar for maybe like a month or so from now. All right, what's next? Uh, next comes from James Argenta, who sends it a $10 super chat. Um, SWC just kicked off with a chorus singing Duel of the Fates, then Ewan and Hayden coming on stage, followed by the Kenobi cast and crew under the thir under 13 hours left. They then showed Andor trailer with August debut. Ooh. Yeah, so first of all, we, we've we been seeing a lot of people firing in the live chat that they dropped an Andor trailer. We're, well, we, we can't actually, obviously we can't watch that right now. So we're going to have to watch that after the show is done. And then we will definitely dive into that and talk about it tomorrow. But an August release? Come on, man. That's... Pretty great. That means Disney Plus is actually finally going to be living up to some potential where it's maybe always going to be having a premiere show playing. But that's pretty exciting. I haven't watched the trailer yet, but I've been stoked about this show. Because that means Kenobi, a Miss Marvel, are concurrent. But yeah, we're well, still well not, get... not quite concurrent, but part of it. There will be some part, overlap. Yeah, overlap. But we're close. Mm -hmm. I mean, they're going to take us because Kenobi will take us through June. Yeah, and then Ms. Marvel will take us into July. And then and then uh, there's only a couple weeks left when we get Andor. Yeah. Wow. That's pretty good stuff. And I'm pretty stoked about this show because it's been in development for a long time. I'm expecting great things. Well, they announced it the same time they announced Kenobi. Yeah. And and I think this is great. The idea of looking at the darker side of the rebellion, the people who had to get who have to do the bloody work of a rebellion. Rebellions are not clean and mm -hmm. nice and it's somebody has to do the blood work, and that's obviously gonna be Andor. I'm excited about it. All right, what's next? Uh, next comes from Jack Wallace, who uh, sends oh. in a $10 super chat. You know Jack. I do know Jack. 
Great to have you back, Rob. Aiden is enjoying strange new worlds. Aaron, your perspective is always great to have. Oh, thank you. And hope the moccasins fit at least for a little bit. Jack, thank you so much. Jack sent us these adorable little moccasins oh uh, for, for the baby. And yes, we literally, I, we found them and squeezed his little feet and got a couple pictures. I'll need to post those though. Yes. Yeah, so thank you so much. We really appreciated your lovely baby gifts for Tommy. Aiden, and his son, is a gifted action figure photographer oh and he sent me um uh pictures he had them framed uh that he did of mandalorian and the predator that i i i moved obviously and i hung them they were one of the first things that i hung up hung up in my new uh, rob observatory oh, very nice all right what's next uh, next comes from Amin, who says, breaking celebration news, Andor will have two seasons, 12 episodes per season. The final scenes will walk us into Rogue One. Wow. Oh, wow. So they announced actually they're going to do two seasons. Of That's great because one of the things we did not know, because some of the shows that Disney Plus do does are intended as limited series or one season. Uh, hearing that they've already greenlit a season two, which I, I think we may have heard that report before, but now it's apparently been confirmed. 12 episodes well, I was each. Say, I hope that that's not a mistake where we're getting six and six. I'm yeah. 24 the, episodes. Oh, bring, right. bring that up again, Jonathan. Let me see exactly how they worded that. They said uh, breaking news, 12, 12 episodes, episodes per, per season. season. I hope you're right about that because I have a feeling it might be six and six, but if it's 12, that's great to hear. And That's it'll be a, a huge departure from what they've been doing with the six episode yeah. um, seasons like they did for Moon Knight, which was definitely not enough. All right. What's next? Uh, Dan, uh, Don Ho says, welcome back. Robinson's in a $10 super chat. Yeah, well, it's good to have the uh, good to have you back at the table. I can't tell you how wonderful it is to be back. Um, but thank you. I very much appreciate that. That's very nice. All right. What's next? Stubble McShave says, I rewatched The Fugitive with, ha with Harrison Ford. That movie is bomb yes so good the writing is really good the characters are very proactive and capable but at the same time completely believable see no like this is a movie that holds up always oh yeah it's so good and just honestly tommy lee jones that moment when he says, i always... didn't kill my wife i don't care like that <laughs> moment is so amazing like the tension of that movie it is an effing amazing movie if you guys have never seen the fugitive with harrison ford and tommy lee jones i don't know what you, like seriously sit down when you want some excellent filmmaking watch that movie it's, it's really incredible good. Um, and this comes from comicbookmovie.com. Andor showrunner confirms 12 episode season two plans. Uh, nice. Yeah, for, for a 12 episode se second season. So, so 24 episodes of uh, Andor coming. That's nice. incredible. Fantastic. All right. What's next? Uh, uh, Jai CSC says, went to Tim Hortons for the first time nice. today as one just opened near me here in the UK. Color me impressed. They've opened Timmy's? In, in the, the UK? UK? I used to go to Tim Hortons when I was in Detroit because, of course, Detroit is uh, right below Canada. It's the only place in the country where you have to go south to get to Canada. That's incredible. Um, listen, yeah, that. Tim Hortons yeah. is wow. the place, the best donut in the world. I've always told everybody is a very specific one because I do love me some Krispy Kreme. But mm. the single best donut in the world is Tim Hortons Boston Cream Donut. It is the, the best donut in the world. Anyway, I'm glad you have it in the UK. That's awesome. All right, what's and, next? And fun fact, if you like Burger King, it's all owned by the same company. Does Tim, does the company yeah. that owns Tim Hortons own Burger King? International brands or restaurant brands international owns Tim Hortons and Burger King. I did not know that I am going it. to Burger King today after the show because I, know, I, know. I am so sick of In-N-Out's French fries. Oh, I hate I'm it. so sick of them. I said to the girl yesterday, I said, these fries suck. And she goes, I know they're pretty boring. No, they're awful. Their fries and are I said, disgusting. Is there, and I asked her, I said, is there cardboard. anything that I can, because the last time that I went, because I go to In-N-Out every day after the show, which is, you know, <laughs> a problem. But, um, <laughs> and I got them extra crispy really? thinking that would help. And then they were just extra crispy cardboard. And so I said to her, I go, what can we do besides drowning it in animal sauce or whatever? And she goes, well, you could have extra salt put on it. And so then I got extra salt thinking that would help. And then I couldn't even eat them at all because they were too salty. And it was like salty cardboard. Man, you guys are so wrong about In-N-Out fries. They are You're so crazy. disgusting. I love them. Oh, and God. I love them with lots of salt. Oh, my God. No, they need to have a McDonald's next to every, every one so that I can get my McDonald's fries and my In-N-Out burger. What's all the right, next let's question? Let's move on. 
Oh, sorry. Uh, Attack of the Mushi. <laughs> Thinking about Burger King. Attack of the Mushi says, watch Top Gun for the first time today. Congratulations. Seeing Maverick tonight and tomorrow night. Wow. Well, that is a great thing to do. Like, if, like listen, the, the, what, what was 86? Yeah. Top Gun came out in 86. So I'm sure there's probably a bunch of people who haven't seen it. Yeah. I'm, I mean, I was like really young when that came out too. So yeah, go watch that. Watch this. But believe me, the second one is so far superior to the first one. It's crazy. Go have a good time. Audiences are loving it. And see it in IMAX. If you if see you it can. on the biggest screen you can. Yeah, absolutely. And with the best sound system that you can. Yeah. That's just as important, if not more important. All right. What's next? Next is from Sam Fisher again. Why does CBS's new True Lies show look like it's going to be a bunch of fun? It stars Steve Howie from Shameless and Ginger Gonzaga from She-Hulk. Wow. I had no idea they were doing a True Lies show. Oh, yeah, the either. trailer's out for it, too. Like, as in Arnold's True yes. Lies? Like, my yes. favorite action film of all time? Yep. Very I had cool. no idea. And, and you still can't get True Lies on Blu-ray. Really? You can't. It's not. There are four light storm productions. The Abyss... True Lies, the remake of Soderbergh's Solaris, or Soderbergh's Solaris, that's a remake of Tarkovsky's Solaris, and Strange Days. They're not out on high def. You can get them, they stream them, but they're not on physical media. Oh, wow. I really like Steve Howey, though. He's great. The He's show great looks pretty good. All right, I'll the have trailer to looks trailer. pretty good. I love, again, my favorite action film of all time is True Lies. It's, it, it looks pretty good. All right, what's next? Next comes to us from uh, Jim X Mafia. Hey, John, have you seen the trailer for Man vs. B? Yes, I have. Dude, I watched that this morning. <laughs> I watched it this morning, too. I don't know what that is. What is that? Okay, so it's it stars Rowan Atkinson, who's, of course, uh, well, Mr. Bean. He's great. Who is a guy who gets a job house-sitting for a, a rich woman in a big old house, and there's a bee that gets in the house. And it's basically <laughs> Caddyshack. It's Bill Murray going after the gopher Go. in Caddyshack, yeah. basically, right? Where in his attempt to capture or kill this bee, he's destroying the house. Oh, my God. I'm watching it right now without the sound. And it, and with, even without the sound, it you see there was this bee. But here's the problem. <laughs> Once I saw that it was a series and not a movie, I'm like, this... This the shtick on this is gonna get old real fast. It was old after the trailer was over. Yeah, yeah, right. Like I think the trailer's delightful, and yeah. I would watch a ninety-minute movie of this. Mm -hmm. I would definitely watch, but a series of this, I, I don't know how that's I don't even know. possible. Yeah, but, I mean, but, but be, I, speaking of great CGI, this B looks great. <laughs> I don't know who they got to play that B, but geez, Louise looks looks like some stuff out of Lion King. All right, what's next? Gang day, Gang day. <laughs> says, what kind of car does Obi-Wan drive? Oh, I know this. A Toyota. By the way, real oh, life thing. No. The, the, real, I don't know if you, if you guys heard of this story. Real life thing. There was a, a Canadian a restaurant where they held a competition for their staff that whichever of the staff, I can't remember who's raised the most tips or did whatever, but in one month, they were going to do this huge giveaway. They were giving away a Toyota. And then the staff busted their ass all month. They got to the end and they said, and this one girl won. And they're congratulations. And they literally handed her a toy. Stop it. Yoda. They, ah, ha, ha, I'll get. She sued them. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. And she won. Yes. Uh, absolutely. <laughs> which, which sent a message to the world. Don't joke around. <laughs> like, don't, because these people bent over backwards and busted their asses to try to win with this. What they clearly intended was a Toyota car. Toyota, and a, yeah, she won. Yeah. All right. Wow. You know, Good bye, for bye. her. I sh we do not have time for this, but, but it reminds me of my favorite lawsuit of all time. It was a Hooters, and it had a lawsuit. That's right. It was a Hooters. I Thank worked you. at a Hooters, and we were voted best staff in Texas, and we got nothing. Just kidding. It was me. I swayed. I, I swayed because I didn't <laughs> get my your customers. I swayed. <laughs> so, I still have my Hooters uniform, and it still fits. My, Sometimes I my wear it My favorite Tom. lawsuit of all time, though. Favorite, and this is absolute true story. You can go look this up. Favorite lawsuit of all time. So this uh, woman bought some uh, contraceptive, right? It was like, a, it's a contraceptive jelly. I don't, I don't know how it works, but whatever. So contraceptive jelly. It's got an oxenol nine in it. Okay. So she got pregnant and decided to sue the company that made it. It came out in the trial that, yes, she used it. Oh, no. But she took the jelly. Stop. Spread it <laughs> nope. on toast. No. And ate it. No. 
I no. didn't see the toast part True. coming, but eating True story, it, but that's not even the good part. Okay. The good part is this. <laughs> in their arguments in court, her argument was that she said to the judge that when things are happening and and the, the, the atmosphere is right and you're in, in the process of getting ready to have sex with somebody, you don't really have time to read instructions. Um, <laughs> to which the judge <laughs> replied, but you had time to make toast. Yeah. Which I think is the greatest. <laughs> I learned that in law school. That was the greatest story that I'd ever heard. That is amazing. But you had time but you had to, kind make of to make toast. Boy, this is why we have sex education in the schools. That's right. Wait, wait, honey. Can you just keep everything as it is? I'm just, I'm just going to be right back from the kitchen. Yeah, Five minutes I, later. <laughs> shing. <laughs> Babe, what are you doing? I'll be right there. Uh, all right. What's next? <laughs> Uh, this comes from <clears throat> Lucky BX. Imagine watching the last episode of X-Men 97 in 2023 and the X-Men walk out of animation into live action and that's how we're introduced to the MCU cast. I'm not going to lie to you. I think that sounds kind of lame. <laughs> I'm not going to lie to you, but uh, yeah, I, 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 I did it. Although I am dying to hear that. Like one of my favorite things in Doctor Strange was hearing that music. Do, 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 do. I mean, I used to love that music so much. I can still see Jubilee in my head, like putting out her fireworks when that's happening. See, I think though that what that doesn't take into consideration is we're all wondering how are they going to explain the X-Men? Like, look, I posited the theory that Wanda when we were still thinking that maybe sure it was a good theory ban banish the but but how do they how are they going to incorporate the x-men into the mcu if they just walked out of an animated show without any explanation suddenly they're just in the mcu does that mean yeah. the characters as we know them just were there the whole time yeah or is it I, it's that's gonna be the billion dollar question how they're gonna handle that all right I, i'm gonna hand it over to you guys to take a few of the questions without me. I'm gonna, I got to go use the bathroom. So I've had like three of these drinks. Too so much I, liquid I IV. So that you guys media. take it over for a few minutes. Too much liquid IV. Gonna use the jelly. <laughs> <laughs> Let me know how that toast is. Uh, Stephen Lind <laughs> DeWood De Wooters uh, says, I want Winnie the Pooh, Blood and Honey to be the first of a trilogy. Next up, Gummy Bears, Bouncing Nightmares, and Paddington, Marmalade Massacre. That I would watch. I, Marmalade I'm Massacre, in. yes. Count me in. Marmalade I think that all sounds massacre. fantastic. Yeah, and I mean, that, can you imagine all these children's uh, animated or children's favorite things coming back? And I mean, I can, and, and I'm actually murderous. I would not be surprised if uh, I would. I would love for Blumhouse to be behind it. Or what about a whole Peanuts? A oh, the Peanuts, Peanuts trilogy gang. of of they all grow up to be. And then Linus, it was it Linus or who's the one that plays the piano? That's Schroeder. Schroeder and just like grabs Lucy and just smant and passes your head in the piano. Or make Lucy and Peppermint Patty a, a murderous couple. Yeah, I mean, I would buy that. I mean, they were. Uh, all right, what's next? That's okay. <laughs> John, God, Professor John leaves the room and it all goes to shit. Yeah, it goes to hell. All right, we are now looking at Jay Master, who sent in a $10 super chat. Thank you, Jay. For those of us not able to attend Star Wars Celebration, Disney is live streaming the celebration on their official Star Wars YouTube channel, all starting at 12 p.m. today, through Sunday. Now, I don't know if that's 12 p.m. Central uh, California time. Yeah, which if so, here, probably. that's in eight minutes. So as soon as we're finished doing our uh, live questions and the Super Chat, then we would love for you to go and head over to the Star Wars YouTube channel and check that out. Or it might be noon Eastern time because we it's already been going on. So... Oh, that's true. Very true. So it's been going on all day. So you know what? After you finish joining us for the day and we say sayonara, then check out the Star Wars Celebration live on the Star Wars YouTube channel. Thanks for so much for letting us know. All right. Next up, we have uh, Mickey Beach sending a $10 super chat. Remember when Thursday midnight screenings were something special? I was looking at Top Gun showtimes today, and now they're as early as 3 p.m. Yeah, as soon as they started, because that was the thing. We've had conversations about this on the show, that they had them at midnight. And that way it started the weekend for the opening weekend box office. But then midnight was too late. So then they moved it up to 10. Well, and then, I mean, because technically they were 12.01 a.m. Right. Uh, so if it was opening on Friday the 27th, it technically was Friday the 27th. But I mean, listen, I loved going to the midnight screenings. I did. I loved there was something really special about it. Yep. But I also really loved it when those midnight screenings became 11. Mm. So because Friday was a work day or 
I even liked it more when they became 10 mm-hmm. and then they moved to like eight and then seven. And and now it's like, yeah, now it's matinees at three o'clock in the afternoon. Well, because going to a movie, doing anything at midnight doesn't sound so bad. But then if you talk about, oh, wait, we're going to be leaving the theater at 3 a.m. Because they're still going to show you a half hour trailer. And then you're yeah. still going to drive home and yeah. And then get up for work. But I do exactly. miss the special nature of it. Now it just seems like Thursday screenings are par for the course. Yeah. So those, those, those 12 to one screenings. What's that? I think the last midnight movie I did was um, for Avengers. And I look at me, I'm smiling, thinking about Avengers (laughs) at El Capitan, the midnight. I I can't get that smile off my face. You know, I'll tell you, I think the last time I went to, it was Age of Ultron, which they started screening at midnight, but then they screened it all night long. They had the same thing with the first Avengers, too. Yeah, and I went and saw it at, I think, four in the morning. Oh, my God. I went with my friend (laughs) Bing. We went and saw it at at the Uh. Panorama. Yeah, All right, oh, listen up, guys. What's um, it? Empire fan, nineteen eighty. Like we miss his super chat. He says, "Hey guys, today my birthday. Hey guys, today is my birthday. Thirty-one years old. I am an old man, getting closer to the that date with the Grim Reaper." <laughs> <laughs> Then I say, like, oh, say things like that. Anyway, you're not, happy you're not at all. Happy birthday. birthday. Have a birthday. wonderful day. All right. They What's next? celebration just for you. Mm-hmm. Next, we have uh, from Murray Reich says, it's ironic from the trailer that Uncle Owen was able to roast Obi-Wan but couldn't stop himself from being roasted later on. Yes, oh. that same joke was sent in yesterday. <laughs> <laughs> like, But yeah, there's that meme going around that is great that it has the emperor going, have you ever heard the tale of Owen Lars or the uh, yeah, Uncle Owen? Owen Lars, the the uh, what do you say, burner? He could he could burn others, but he couldn't help but being burned himself. Yeah, we heard it a bunch. All right, what's next? Next is from Suthius, who sends in a ten dollars Suthius, uh, a Suthius a chat, $10 a ten dollars Suthius chat. Thank you. One of the funniest comedy series on right now is the Dang On Depp Heard Trial. The people that are on the stand to testify are some characters, y'all. Heard's expert witness is the best one yet. Well, I like listen. I'm I'm avoiding. Completely. Thing, like until there's specific movie news stuff that comes out about it, I don't give a shit about the Depp Heard trial. I really don't. So they deserve nope. each other. This right, will be next? a movie, John. <laughs> oh, there will be a movie. Oh, there make, I, make no movie. mistake about it. There will be a movie. All right. What's uh, next? Spencer Smothers says, good morning, can't be a crew. Good morning. In a time where VFX are complicated, so cl- are, are completed so close to a project's release date, judging the visual effects in a trailer is pointless to me. Well, the, one of the other big things that a lot of people, and we've talked about this before, Rob, is that a lot of time visual effects on a television screen do not look the same as they will on a movie screen because i i mean like if you guys watch some movies uh, on television now and i'm not talking about like your 4k streams or or discs or whatever but if you just pop on tv you'll see an effect that kind of looks out of place when you knew in the movie it looked perfectly fine so there's a little bit of that in there as well all right what's next this is from Reese Jones, who says, The Force is with you, can't be a crew, but you are not Jedi yet. That's oh, I've been a Jedi think. for a long time. That's what you think. <laughs> All right, what's next? Next is from uh, Empire Fan 1980. Says, Oh, yeah, there it is. <laughs> yeah, there it is. Yeah, uh, well, there we, you go. We didn't miss it. Hey, that guys, today my birthday about? is 31. No, no, no. All right, All Raphael. right, Rafael Castillo says, The scene in Field of Dreams where Ray Liotta's character asks, is this heaven? We'll have much more impact oh. now. Yeah, you can bet you're going to see a lot of that online today, and rightfully so. I, I mean, again, it's just like this. I mean, he was just 67 years old. I mean, but you're right. That, like, what better? If you're Ray Liotta, what better way to go? Working in the business that you love, making a movie in the Dominican Republic, in your in your sleep at probably at some resort. I mean, good on you. You win again, Ray. And if that's the again. clip they show all day long, not a bad clip. Not a bad one to because, show. Because, man, that movie's great. All right, what's next? Next is from Fr- uh, Fredo Valcos. Hey, guys, Aaron, you're the best. Rob, I missed you, man. Thank you, Fredo. Yeah, it's always good to have the I family around you. the table. And Ray and Jonathan, you suck. <laughs> Get the second part of that. All right, what's next? Next is from T- uh, Taki75, who says, can't wait for the She-Hulk episode where Daredevil is going to bump some uglies with her. I do not like that term, bump uglies. I don't know why. I like a lot of gross terms, but that one, for some reason, just doesn't... Moist. Ugh. <laughs> it's so moist. Bump moist uglies. I don't know. That Pump trailer did make ugly. me want to go there. You know, if I ever had an opportunity to date a She-Hulk, I would do it. I still oh, love the whole the whole next. dating app thing was hilarious to me. All right, what's funny. next? 
Next is from uh, A. Marcellus, who says Winnie the Pooh has to say, oh, bother. Oh, yes. Kill. Oh, yes. Oh, oh bother, bother has to be said. <laughs> many oh, times. bother. Absolutely. All right. What's next? Next is from Aiden Foley, who says, I'm weirdly fascinated by this poo film. Sign me up. I think saying, everything about this sounds great. I'm so excited to see this. All right, what's next? Uh, Corey Hensley says, good to have you back, Rob. Now tell us your thoughts on modern Star Trek, because God knows we missed it. Yeah, oh, there's I'm, a new I'm, episode today. I'm just going to shut that down right now. That's my thought. <laughs> there's, there's a new, a new episode, episode today. today. All right, what's next? From Sam Fisher says, Captain Pike may be a yellow shirt, but Black Bolt is a red shirt. I kid. I love the character oh. Black Bolt. <laughs> well, uh, we're not going to go into that because, but for those of you who know, you know. All right, what's next? Uh, from Monkey of All DJ says, "Hey crew, welcome back, Rob. Quick question: What is the different renew? What is the different remuneration between YouTube and Patreon? Better for YouTube? Sorry about uh, sorry about you. Oh, sorry about your Leafs and uh, Jagger is still thinking of Jaeger. a comeback. Jagger is still thinking of a comeback. Yamir Jagger, man, one, seriously, one of the greatest hockey players of all, and an ageless wonder. That dude can still play." Um, yeah, the Leafs, uh, the Leafs are the Leafs. There's nothing there. Um, yeah, so we uh, we are transitioning from Patreon from from people who've been supporting us on Patreon. And God, thank God for our Patreon supporters who have been there for us since day one that we relaunched the John Campy channel. Our channel wouldn't be here or exist without our Patreon supporters. But YouTube absolutely takes a bigger cut. They absolutely do. But it is worth it because it gives us more avenues to give benefits to our members with Patreon. It, it became a real struggle to try to actually provide tangible benefits to the people who are our Patreon supporters. And I get it. When I brought that up with our Patreon supporters, like a year and a half ago, two years ago, they all said to me with one voice, <laughs> John, we're not Patreon supporters for benefits. We're Patreon supporters because we want to support the show. And I've always appreciated that, but I've always wanted it to be, to be there for there to be more practical benefits and YouTube, even though they take a bigger cut of it, they've just helped us provide much more tangible benefits for our members which is what, which is what I really wanted for our members. So yeah, there's absolutely that. Thanks for asking that. It's a really good question. All right. What's next? Next comes from Scotty Hale. Nine, ta nine days till the boys. Oh my God. I wish I would have been in the room for the first review of the dailies of hero gasm episode. Inject my veins. I mean, listen, I, we're going to have, several shows running at once. I mean, we're mm -hmm. going to be very busy with our after shows because we've got Obi-Wan, we've got Ms. Marvel, and we're going to have The Boys. Which I am so stoked. No, I am no so stranger excited about things? The Boys. No, 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 no. You can't do after shows for Netflix shows. Oh, you, right. You so they all get really... Yeah, yeah, because they just drop them all at once. Just, we, I remember we tried doing it back in the AMC days and we we're like, this is pathetic. So we just, yeah, we, there will be no after shows, which unfortunately means no after shows for Umbrella Academy. And then there's right. going to be the boys' college spinoff. Yes, which you were really close to being in. I was. I was really excited about that. Like, I know. Right. I keep I keep getting auditions for the boys. One of these days, I'm going to get one of those roles. I keep forgetting because you were like... You were really in the running for uh, uh, Queen... Queen Maeve. Queen Maeve. No, You're... I just put myself on tape for it. You know, uh, I, didn't, I wasn't. I, I like to think that I that I was really in the running, but no, I sent in my tape and they were like, no, but they keep calling me back. So clearly I'm uh, one of these days. We'll All get right. there. I think you're a little modest. All right, mm -hmm. what's next? Uh, next is from Sam Fisher again. Nowhere in the canon does it say that Orphan Black is not in the Marvel Universe. So Jen Walters could be another clone. Well, technically speaking, nothing says specifically that Seinfeld isn't in the MCU either. True. But I don't think we're about to see, you know, Kramer joining the Avengers. So, yeah, no, I, I, I don't think we're going to see that. But, God, I, I'm just so excited that we've got such a, again, another good Canadian kid. Marvel's getting flooded with good Canadians, right? That's what's going to make it great so we've got Ms. marvel's a good canadian kid we got she hulk's a good canadian kid if I mean, you want your Deadpool's show to coming. be great then all you need is to cast a canadian it's just gotta be canadian i would love to see she hulk have to defend deadpool oh like that, some, i want to see she hulk and deadpool on screen together i yeah, really I, I, really do. I mean I, that would be that would be fun to see all right what's next Next, we have from Parker Thwips. Sorry if this was already mentioned before, but I would love to hear your thoughts on the bad guys. I never watched it. And you know what? Which, because we saw yeah. uh, Aaron and I, when we were at Cin the last, not this most recent one, but the previous CinemaCon, they showed us the first preview of the bad guys. And I thought it looked terrible. So I, I instantly lost all interest in it. But the last I checked, like the critic score of it, 
I mean, it's got an 88 on Rotten Tomatoes. And what's the audience rating on it? The Metacritic? No, no, the audience rating. Oh, if, I don't... I don't know if you're on the, the actual no, Rotten Tomatoes just, page. Uh, so, um, like, I've heard, honestly, nothing but good things about yeah. it. Yeah. Uh, but it's just I kind of missed the window on it, so I never did watch it. Just because that first impression... You know what they say? You never get a second chance to make a good first impression. And it made a terrible first wow, impression. Wow, it's got a 93% yep, got a audience 93%. score. I'm hearing nothing but good things. So, you know, one of these days I'm going to have to sit down and watch it. Kind of like it, Chip and Dale. I still got to watch that. It's on streaming now. Yeah, I'm going to have to watch it. All right, what's next? Next is from Madween Says, Rob, if it weren't for Twisted Metal 2, I would have graduated college with a 4.0. <laughs> <laughs> John, without mentioning details of Doctor Strange 2, how do you think it affects Agatha now? You know, somebody brought up the Agatha question before because somebody had asked, okay, if the Darkhold like, really like, has that negative effect on people, then... How bad is Agatha considering she was under, was she under the influence of the Darkhold, the fact that she was in possession of it? I said, yeah, but if you go back to the early flashbacks that happened in WandaVision, like she was bad pretty early, but maybe it was the Darkhold that made her worse. I don't know. It's going to be really interesting. I wouldn't doubt it if we get to see an Agatha when they do the Agatha series a little nicer. Mm. Or a little more self-conscious being separated from the dark hold. I don't know, Rob. What do you think? Yeah, I, you know, I think with Agatha, it's different because it was it was Wanda's grief. It, the way my interpretation of the movie or what happened to her in, in WandaVision, it was her grief and her loss that allowed her to be call it possessed or consumed by the power of the dark hold. Whereas I think Agatha managed that better because she's she's bad. <laughs> she likes she likes Agatha doing what she's all doing. Along. Yeah, and I, I think the dark hole does different things to different people. That's a, that's a really good point. All right, what's next? Uh, next is from Drew C. He says John, it's let us know your thoughts, not leave your thoughts there. LOL. Hey, listen, it's whatever I goddamn say it is. <laughs> <laughs> it's the John Campia show, and it's whatever the hell he says it is. Uh, you're right. I need to get more consistent with that. By the All way, right. Marvel Canadian Universe. There you go. That's it. The MCU is, is turning the Marvel, into the Marvel Canadian, Canadian Universe. Universe. All right. Can we get next? an Alpha Flight movie then? Um, oh, Amon's, Alpha Flight. Amon says, news out of celebration. They are screening the first two episodes of Obi-Wan at 7 p.m. to the crowd who are at the panel. That's great. I think that is awesome that people, and I don't want to hear any of the cry, where's she at fair? I can't be there. They should shoot them first. I get so sick of when I hear that. Listen, there are people, our own Chris Carr right now is at Star Wars Celebration. Mm -hmm. I'll be there on Saturday. But hey, listen, I think it's great when these conventions and gatherings give something a little bit special to people who were able to be there in person. Absolutely. I think that's great. Listen, they're only getting it like four or five hours before we are. That's fine. I think that's great. They're going to get to see before the rest of us. They made the trek down to Star Wars Celebration. Good on them. Stop your crying. We'll get to see about five hours later, but I'm excited for the people at Celebration. Me too, man. Plus, you're going to see it with the thousands of people with in the audience. With die exactly. hard Star Wars fans. I, I mean, how much fun would that be? Oh, yeah, that would be a blast to be there for that. Absolutely. Those are the same kind of people who are going to complain if they made the trek down there and they didn't show them. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I, and I listen, I am one of those. When I go to one of these conventions and they don't give us anything exclusive, <laughs> I'm one of the people who cries about that. I whine and bitch about that. All right, what's next? Next from Jay Master, who sends in a $20 super Jay chat. Jay Master! Thank you. Says, hey, crew, the plot line for Winnie the Pooh, Blood and Honey also reveals that Eeyore was eaten by Pooh and Piglet. What? And IGN does, does reveal that Disney still has the rights to Tigger, and it is not under the public domain oh, so yet. T so if Tigger was not in the original uh, Winnie the Pooh storybook... Then, yeah, then, no then this, that's not, oh, that's too bad. I would have loved to have seen a methed out Tigger. I don't I know. Can't I can't believe they ate Eeyore. Oh, my God. That makes it kind of brutal, wait, though. Wait, Eeyore was the little, was the donkey. Wait, the donkey. With the pinned on tail. The, hmm. the, the always depressed. I would donkey. have eaten Piglet first. But well, I've given up pork, so you maybe can't eat not. Piglet, maybe I would eat Piglet donkey. eats you first. Oh, hey now. All right. Next up, we have from uh, Ahmed. There's no says, innuendo there. Oh, my God. Joey is dreaming and she's barking in her sleep. That the yeah, shadow does that all the time. She always starts barking in her <gasps> I sleep. I wish the microphone was on her. It's so cute. Mm. Ahmed says, Hi team. I missed you guys. Hope you're all well. Love. Oh, thank you, Ahmed. Appreciate that very it's always nice when people want to write in just to say some nice, encouraging things. Appreciate that. All right. What's uh, next? from Stubble McShave says, I can see Obi-Wan crossover with Andor. 
I mean, let's face it. They want to cross ev- with these Star Wars series on Disney Plus. They want to s- cross everything over with everything. Um, although, what bring that back up again, there, Jonathan, for a second. You can see, um, was it? You can see Obi Wan crossover with Andor. Yeah, like yeah, they could possibly do that. Yeah, but, but again, because of the time period, there's a lot of different possibilities. But yeah, they want to cross everything over with everything. All right, what's next? From Stella, from Josh Razukas, he says, um, shout out to Ray Liotta, back to the cornfield, RIP. Mm. Yeah, I, again, I, again, just, it was while I was driving in. I, I My thing went off, my buzz went off. I looked at my watch, and Ray Liotta passes away at 67. So sad to hear that, and it just makes me, you know, really, really longing to see these new movies he was working on that hasn't come out yet. So uh, just we lost one of the greats. All right, what's next? Next is from Orlando Orego. Winnie as a murderer. Now I need to watch this film. I'm telling you, this is so great. And I don't know if Disney's <laughs> going to be, if it becomes popular, which it probably won't. But if it becomes popular, Disney's going to really think twice about putting another Winnie the Pooh movie for a while. Give kids nightmares. All right, what's next? Is from Sam Fisher again. You know what I want? A Kratos gore team up movie. Kratos. Kratos. Who is, Sorry. The, uh, who is the God of War lead character. I mean, yeah, I don't think you're going to see that coming in too, but if we're going to do another Sony Disney crossover kind of thing, that would be a pretty good one to see. All right, what's next? And from uh, Cali Royale tw- uh, 92, send in a super chat. Thank, Thank you, you so Cal. much. Uh, Jeffrey Niffen says, ridiculous theory about the ending of Fast X. Dom gets transported to the distant future and because of radiation, gets black eyes and becomes hypersensitive to light. Thus, we get pitch black. Which, by the way, mm-hmm. character's not... He's just a little more quiet Dom. When you watch Pix Blind, he's just a quieter Dom. No, but isn't he? But he's blind. Yes. Yeah. Weren't he's they going to make a trilogy out of that they franchise? Did. Or well, they did. They, they did. definitely it was did a X. sequel. Yes. Yeah, no, they, they did Wait. the sequel. They did Pitch Black Two, which was terrible. I thought. Mm-hmm. Uh, but Pitch uh, Black was Chronicles of Riddick. Chronicles. That was that's right. Oh, that's yeah. yeah. It was Chronicles yeah. of Riddick. They did Riddick. And by the way, the cast. I think. Uh, um, freaking uh, Billy Butcher. Uh, yeah, Carl Urban. Uh, Carl Urban Dame was Judy in Dench. The, Dame Judi Dench was in it. Oh, that movie was so bad. <laughs> that movie was so bad with such good people That's in it. That's so weird because everything Dame Judi Dench is usually so amazing, like that cat, cat. movie. Yes. <laughs> where we saw those cat buttholes CGI'd onto people. All right, what's next? From Isaac Vena, Val, 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 Valenzuela. Valenzuela. Thank you. John, you need to watch Men. Recent Academy Award nominee Jesse Buckley is amazing. The third act is a bit odd, but well worth it. Tell you what, Isaac, you're the only person who said that to me. I've heard a, I've heard from a bunch of our viewers writing saying Men is terrible. I, I just, listen, I love Alex Garland's movies, but just the trailers for Men, is that, like, I didn't find one reason why I would want to watch that movie. And so I thought, I'll do what I do sometimes. I'll wait to hear from our viewers, see what they think of it. And that's the first recommendation I've heard. Everybody else I've heard from said, skip it. I, have, has, has anybody in the room checked out Men yet? I've yeah. heard a few people that I know who thought it was interesting, but they didn't love it. Okay. You know, Good to know. I mean, I'll, I'm will i going to catch up with it just because I love Alex Garland. Yeah. All right. What's next? Next is from A. Marcellus says, Rob, your nerdrotic friend is infecting people with the nonsense MCU talk. You might want to tell him to tone it down. Well, listen, look, guys, my channel, I'll, I'll, like A. Marcellus, I know you don't mean badly. My channel is not to write in to complain about other YouTubers. My channel is to talk about the things we like and the things we love, not to bitch about other YouTubers or anything like that. So we're just going to skip over that. I know you didn't mean anything by A. Marcellus, but we're not here to talk bad about other YouTubers here. All right, what's next? Uh, next, we have from Cardo the Basis says, Ajax and Daxter live actions, uh, live action TV series would be awesome. The original game is still enjoyable 21 years later. I'm not totally sure how you do that, that live action right there. I don't know what you think. Yeah, I mean, look, I I love that game, you know, and, and I the characters are great. But yeah, how do you, I don't know if that would really work in live action. You know, maybe really elaborate 3D animation, but live action? I mean, I guess it would be cool. It'd be it, it'd be very expensive to do, which would make it cost prohibitive to make in live action. All right. What's next? From Murray Reich says, do you think Cad Bane shows up in Obi-Wan? <sighs> That's a good question. He was so scary. He they did him very well in Mandalorian. I mean, I'm not really thrilled with how it all resolved, but I they did that character really well in Mandalorian. I'm going to guess no. I mean, 
I know a lot of people are already theorizing like them throwing everybody into this thing. It is six episodes. So, <laughs> right. uh, it's uh, so madness. It's going to have all, everyone and everything. Yeah, I, I, I don't see. So I might I'm, I, hey, listen, it's not outside of the realm of possibility. I am going to guess no. All right. What's next? Next is from Nate Cook, who says, hey, John, I'm almost done with the with film and production school. And my teacher is Mr. Jonathan Furtado. Oh. He says he knows you, Rob. Oh, we're yeah, we go way back. I've known Jonathan for the better part of 20 years. And I've actually he's had me speak to his. He's up in uh, Northern California and I've spoken to his production courses. He, he knows his stuff. Oh, very cool. And yeah, congratulations cool. for being almost finished with your film studies. That's fantastic. Yeah. And you better have done all your homework. <laughs> All right, what's next? <laughs> Same. Do you want to get an A? Jonathan's not going to just dole out grades to anybody who writes into a YouTube show. Blake 62. <laughs> Come on. I just love the scolding, Rob. <laughs> Blake 62 says, Shoeless Joe has returned to the corn. This is a tough one. What a great actor. R.I.P. Ray Liotta. Yeah, yeah. I, and again, he will be missing. There's going to be a lot of streaming of Goodfellas over the next couple weeks for sure absolutely all right what's next kimberly ventura says hey john the boyfriend oh, and i are like a 20 dollars super chat oh Thank wow you, kimberly. Hey, yeah sorry about that uh thanks kimberly the john uh hey john boyfriend and i are big fans we are going to star wars celebration yay and we were hoping to get you to sign a copy of your book the pride if we see you love your show and may the force be with you oh well thank you so first of all thank you so much for owning a copy of my book um yeah i will be there ann and i will both be at star wars celebration on saturday um, so by all means, uh, you know, it, it, like at one point, I'll tell you where you can find us too. At one point we will be, we only signed up for one autograph session. One. We would have done you McGregor, but we, we got on that too late. You McGregor's already sold out, but of all of them, we signed up for one Sam Whitwer. <laughs> <laughs> That's hilarious. So we signed up. So uh, we will be over at the uh, Sam Witwer line. <laughs> okay, like, wait, why is that funny? I don't understand. Oh, uh, there's, I'll, I'll tell you the background. I'll tell you the, the, the okay. background it's of funny. it. But we I'm will psycho. be there. Um, you know, uh, remember folks, ugly people have feelings too. Uh, <gasps> like I made a shirt, I made a shirt that says, uh, ugly people need love too, uh -huh. with, the, with Sam Witwer's face <laughs> on it. Because Sam Witwer is like disgustingly attractive. Like he's a, he's a super oh, good okay. guy. But, uh, yeah, He's I will be, I think at his 10 a.m. autograph session, that's where me and Ann are going to go. So we're gonna go. I, he doesn't know that we're going to be there, but we're just going to show up and say, hey, Mr. Whitworth, can we get your autograph? <laughs> so that should be fun. All right, what's next? Next is from Dakota, who says, apparently the Mickey Mouse character goes into the public domain in 2024. Do you think Disney can prevent others using it? Oh, my God. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Look, actually, technically speaking, Mickey Mouse should have gone into the public domain a couple of times already in the past. But the lobby has gotten the law changed several times to keep extending that copyright thing. And... Right now, because there are some politicians who uh, are trying to use their political power to punish anybody in the country who doesn't see things their way, they're now targeting Disney and trying to get the copyright shrunk to try to hurt Disney. Um, but hey, listen, to be fair, again, the way the laws were, a lot of those characters should have been in the public domain already. But yeah, Disney's got a lot of influence and a lot of money. So I don't think we're ever going to see Mickey Mouse go into the public domain. No. I, I, don't, I don't think it'll ever happen. What am I thinking of? There was something where Mickey Mouse had like a drug. It wasn't Mickey, but it was a mouse had a drug fueled night with somebody. And a, a, it's a show the that The Sorcerer's I, Apprentice? No. <laughs> and then there was like a lot of like sodomy involved and- it was yeah, Sorcerer's Rob's Apprentice. Listening. No, I'm just, no. Do you know what I'm talking about? That was a weekend. I told you about a few weeks. You know. Sorry, sorry, sorry. What happens in Vegas? Uh, although whatever you're, whatever you heard about, it, I want to watch it. No, I'm telling you, there there Sounds was a like thing, and I will remember what it was. And I'm I I. All right. What's dream. next? Uh, <laughs> Freddy Valco said, uh, Fred, Fredo Valco, Fredo. Sorry, sorry. Fredo says, Rob, when are you coming back to Seattle? I'm from Renton and it would be cool to see you. Well, Fredo, I'm I'm from Mercer Island. So being from Renton, you know, we, I could have I could have swum, swum, swam, swam to your house when I was growing up. Uh, I do not know. I've got to go see my mom probably maybe this summer, you know, for a long weekend. 
I haven't been to Seattle in years. I really like Seattle. Yeah, it's when well, it's not raining, it's very pretty. It, it's funny because Seattle has turned into the way Seattle was when I was a kid growing up. Like you go down to Third Avenue, it's become so bad because of the homeless and the drug addicts and everything. It's it's not it's it's weird. I'm like, wow, we're back in time 40 years. How interesting. Or we're just in Los Angeles. It was South Park. Logan Jones oh. tells me oh. and Mario Cor Corsato said, South Park, he started the coronavirus with Randy. It's the South Park episode where Randy uh, get Inadvertently created, yeah. Yeah, and, yeah. and there's a character that there's no mistake. It's Mickey Mouse. Well, my favorite thing on South Park with Mickey Mouse was the Jonas Brothers episode. Have you ever seen that? Oh. Mm -mm. <gasps> You hearing never things. seen the Jonas Brothers thing? That just makes me laugh just hearing you say it. I okay, so <laughs> first, first of all, Jonas, come here, you little bastards! Huh? But anyway, the Mickey Mouse in that is great. But like the Jonas, yeah, this is the purity ring thing, right? The Jonas Brothers are promoting oh. the purity rings, but everybody knows they're sleeping with all their fans behind the stage. So there's a bunch of little girls in the room, like waiting. They get to oh, meet the Jonas God. Brothers, and the Jonas Brothers just walk in. Goes, Hi, girls! And all the little girls go. I just open their mouths. <laughs> it's just it's so bad. But that's what I'm but saying is how can South Park get away with having a character who clearly is Mickey Mouse? It's parody. Uh, it's covered under parody. There you go. Okay, what's next? <laughs> Dr. Kep says, do you think live action mask will be made? They, You know what? Yeah. Hasbro talked about it, the mask toys. Yeah. I, I just don't know if the world really is clamoring for that. I, I can tell, definitely tell you the world's not clamoring for it. I mean, so. yeah. Ma, 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 mask, mask. Yeah, no, no one's <laughs> looking for that. All right, what's next? From Nerd or Die says, John, liquid IV and athletic greens in the same cup. <laughs> that's that's a boost right there. I think you turn into She-Hulk. I, yeah, I, I, think, I, think I think that's when you get the prefixed CGI She-Hulk right wow. there. That's what that leads to. All right, what's next? From Stubble McShave again, we have heard The Flash may have 45 minute, 45 credited screenwriters. <laughs> I, I, you know what? That would not surprise me. Yeah. Well, look, w when you understand that they went through five or six different sets of writers and probably a whole ton of different story notes. At some point, if it's considered the same project, just it evolved, There's, there could be, I doubt we're gonna see written by 45. Like one of the biggest ones I ever saw was Cowboys and Aliens. Remember that train wreck? John Favreau, <laughs> Daniel Craig, Harrison Ford. Yep. Yeah. Um, that had like nine or 10 screenwriters on it, like which is definitely one of the problems with that film. But I, I would, with all the different iterations The Flash has gone through over the last five years, I wouldn't be surprised to see a massive, massive. But just don't think for a second that that means 45 guys got together in a room and painstakingly wrote. Yeah. No, no, no. It's, it's going to be a lot of people who came and went. And ladies. Guys and ladies. ladies. All right. What's next? From uh, Jake Garcia says, shout out to Chris on that Digimon reference yesterday. <laughs> Dig Digimon. Loose French women. Digimon on the chip. Yes, I remember that. That was funny. All right. What's next? Uh, Peppermint Patty says, hi, John and crew. I'm so excited for Obi-Wan, but I actually think I'm more excited for Stranger Things tonight. Also, I love Davy, Davy Jones CGI. Uh, Davy Jones CGI was actually pretty good, especially yeah. for its mm -hmm. time. Uh, I keep forgetting that Stranger Things comes out tonight because it's Obi Wan Day. That's all that matters. Is that? But look, I am very much looking forward to Stranger Things season four. I've heard that it is definitely the creepiest, the scariest, and some people daring to say the best season of, or at least half season of Stranger Things yet. That actually drops tonight, and you'd be forgiven if you forgot that. Because again, what's most important is that it is game day for Obi Wan. I'll watch uh, Stranger Things tomorrow. Did all you right. watch the first eight minutes? Yes, I did. We talked we about the show. Oh. Mm -hmm. That the Pretty first, eight, they were great. Pretty yeah, good. those first eight minutes were great. All right, what's next? Addison sends in a super chat and says, "Gore needs to kill Zeus like Batman did Paul Allen." Okay, so that is a reference to American Psycho. American Psycho. Um, but I listen. I think, yeah, I don't think Zeus. There's a reason I think we see uh, King Valkyrie with Zeus's lightning. And not Zeus. I, I I don't think Russell Crowe lasts long in this movie. I think Gore kills him probably pretty quick. Yeah. All right. What's next? From Jay Masters, who sends in a ten dollars super chat. Hey John, after you watch Chippendale Rescue Rangers this weekend, keep an eye on the credits. A certainly certain wrestling actor of a franchise appears, and there is two. There are two post credit scenes. All right. I will keep my eyes open for and that. What, like and what? In Chippendale's Chippendale. Rescue Rangers. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Okay. Yeah, and loved it. So I I got to watch it here pretty quick. All right. What's next? From uh, Hooper says, do you think this will be Hemsworth's last MCU movie? Nope. No. I, I think um, 
I think, look, it's recently Hemsworth talked about how he has re-fallen in love with this character again. So, no, I don't think this is going to be the last. And I'll tell you what, I mean, we talked about this on the show yesterday. We were talking about why do I think that the MCU feels like it's lost a little steam. Don't get me wrong. It's still doing really good. And I'm super excited for all their stuff, especially Thor, Love and Thunder. Cannot wait. But one of the things I pointed out was you cannot skip over or lose the, the sight of the fact that they lost Tony and Steve. They lost Iron Man and Captain America. These are the faces of the MCU. For 13 years, they have been what made the MCU feel like the MCU. And Black Widow. Uh, well, and Black Widow, not as much, but still, I mean, those were the two main faces. And in one movie, they were gone. Not only that, but you lost your two biggest stars of the MCU. Not only did you lose Tony and Steve, you lost Chris Evans and Robert Downey Jr. They'll both be back at some point. But, you know, like that. The next guy up in that is Chris Hemsworth. So I don't think Disney's going to want to lose him from the MCU right now. I think they got because they're right now flooding the market with all these new characters. You got to maintain some totally recognizable, lets us feel secure. We, the audience, we feel at home because the MCU feels like the MCU when Thor's on screen. Yeah. And I, I, so I don't think he wants to go anywhere and I don't think Disney wants some, to go anywhere. Some people too need just a, a breath of fresh air and uh, Top Gun is certainly a breath of of fresh air everyone needs to go see that this weekend Absolutely. if you're if you're tired of the superhero thing or just getting like <clears throat> oversaturated with it you want some action that's top gun right now well the great thing about the movies too is you don't have to pick and choose you can watch them right. all so yeah go see top gun this weekend definitely all right what's next uh from hooper says do you think this no nope, from Payne perry says obi-wan shory and stranger things sure uh shory shory do you mean shorzy I don't know what that is. I don't know either. Okay. So are. basically, there is a spinoff of, oh, why am I freezing on the name of the Hulu show that I introduced you and Tom to? Uh, with the, with the uh, it's the Canadian show. Oh, um, gosh. He, why he why am I freezing on oh, it? Is that the? Not uh, Letterkenny. Yes, Letter Letterkenny. Letter 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 oh. Letter Letter it says spinoff of Letterkenny. Oh, well, then there you go. Um, so, yes. So I, I haven't seen any of it yet, though, but. Yeah, you turned me on to that. Yeah, too. Shorzy. Yeah. Shorzy. 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 I yeah, may have that's said probably that. what he meant Incorrect. by that. I did. I did not know that was premiere. Uh, Shorzy moves to Sudbury, Sudbury, Canada, Sudbury. to join a senior AAA hockey team in his quest to never lose again. Here's an interesting thing. So back in my, for those of you who have followed me since the movie blog, back in the early movie blog days, one of my writers was my buddy Rodney, and Rodney uh, has appeared on various things. He, he Rodney appeared. Uh, on several of our Jedi Council episodes. Rodney's a buddy of mine. I got together with Rodney when I was just up in Canada again. Uh, we were roommates for a while, but he just moved. He was back in Hamilton doing something else, but he just moved to Sudbury. And he was telling me, I live five minutes up the road from the arena where they filmed Shorzy. <laughs> and so he's like, right, he sees the production of it and everything like that. So good on Rodney. A little trip down memory lane for those of you guys who've been following me for a long period of time. All right, what's next? From Jay Master, who's, uh, we, okay, we're, oh, we're not scrolling anymore. So back, uh, back or back, back. Bad gear play. Back air play. Just send in a super chat to be supportive. Thank, Thank you, you man. so much. And guys, that'll do it for today's installment of the john campia show thank you so much for being here and making the show part of your day hey listen obviously tomorrow we're gonna have to talk about an andor trailer we're gonna have to talk about a pair disney just sent me a thing too that they just launched another trailer as well so anyway we got a whole bunch of stuff we're gonna and have there's to talk indie about. stuff in What's the that? In, indie five stuff too from what i'm reading in the chat they didn't show an indie five trailer um because i heard a poster, I think there. someone said a poster and then john williams played the uh the music yeah i heard john was there so we'll have a lot to talk yeah. about all that tomorrow as well i hope you guys will come back and join us for that hey guys listen we were going to do a mailbag yesterday but we realized rob was coming today he hadn't done a mailbag in a bit so he's going to do mailbag today keep your eyes open and let's bring up that graphic again jonathan don't forget tomorrow not only do we have the John Campia show in the morning, but at 4 p.m. tomorrow afternoon, we will have our Obi-Wan Kenobi open spoiler after show. We're going to talk all about it. You guys, we can talk in a full open spoiler discussion. Make sure you guys come and join us for that. All right. I want to thank the people sitting around the table with me making his return. Mr. Robert Meyer Burnett. Really good to have you back, Rob. Rob, where can people find you online? Well, you can find me on Twitter at Burnett RM. Find me on Instagram. Right. Yeah, yeah I'll, I'll get around to following Burnett, you there at some point. Find me on my own YouTube channel. 
the post geek singularity. And by the way, uh, Indiana Jones comes out June 30th, 2023. Uh-huh. Sure. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And they sure. did, they did put a first look. It's on Twitter. You can see Indiana Jones. First that look. literally looks like Michael Jackson. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't seen. We'll we'll talk about that tomorrow too. Wow. Sitting beside Rob, Aaron Cummings today. Aaron, where can people follow you? You can check me out on Instagram at Aaron L Cummings. Say bye and good night, Joey. Oh, Joey. Uh, sitting over there, who's been joining you guys in the live chat today, Ray Aura. Ray, where can people find you besides barbecuing for game day tonight? Ray Aura with a zero. And sitting beside him, of course, producer Jonathan. Jonathan, where can people find you? Still smiling about that Avengers Midnight Screening. <laughs> find me at Sonic if you want it on Twitter. And, of course, you guys can follow me on Instagram and on Twitter. Simply right there at John Campia. <laughs> All right, guys, that will do it for us for today. Thank you guys so much for being here and making the show part of your day. It, you know, we, I say it at the end of every show. There's only 24 hours in the day. There's only so much time. The fact that you guys choose to spend a bunch of your time here with us is huge to us. Thank you so much for that. Guys, we'll see you again tomorrow. My name is John Campia, and until next time, my friends, bye-bye.